like... Watch everything fall apart the moment I hit the start button. Like, I have such bad luck. The stream is just gonna die the moment I hit start. It's not... It's not... Don't be the cynical. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Don't be cynical. This is only a stream where you're gonna admit some of your deepest regrets and guilty mistakes. Don't be nervous. <laughs> No, nope, it's not like people could attack fine. you or get. I'm or, here, dude. It's not like anybody could attack you or call you out for the stuff you're about to say. That's crazy. Well, Don't be nervous. <laughs> call you out for things you did when you were in middle school, bro. Yeah, middle school. You'd be surprised, Mika. I'm pretty sure that I, I'm. I'm literally doing this like a confession booth so I can get it off my chest and stop going. People don't know I did that. But I do. Like, tell, tell the pastor all your sins and you will go to heaven. Ah, uh, yes, heaven. Oh, how will I ever meet all of the husband characters when in heaven? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, husband hotel, real? Damn. No, no, don't say its name. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Um, no, that's my fault. Don't say its name. You're going to summon them. <laughs> this, is, this is going to be literal Rainbot, hell. why you not make they, husband videos anymore? <laughs> I love my fans, but guys, I make so many cooler things now. Please don't ask about husband theories when I'm making hour-long, like, fan fiction. Dio <laughs> yes. oh, is here. Hi, Dio. Okay, Dio. that's the thing I wanted to say. <laughs> you want to introduce yourself for the second time? Yes, I can introduce myself for the second time time hello um i'm mika i post funny art sometimes online um i go by they them that's it i'm not Bro, a very interesting person <laughs> so now are you, you a, so what's yourself, in your... rain. hi i also go by those things that you call pronouns and i am because so many people ask about that but I'm, i have to be vague so literally i would say um I don't know. I, I lost brain cells mid-sentence. Something, something. Hi, I'm Rainbot. If you don't know who I am, I don't know why you're here. Um, and if you are just vibing, that's cool. Um, same hat for the pronoun situation. Uh, I can't say it directly because that would be not cool, I guess. But so many people ask about it. So I'm, it's a long story. I'll tell you later. Uh, so many people ask yes. about it. It's like, Rainbot, what's in your pants? And I'm like, a gun. But no, it's all serious. <laughs> Violence. Violence. Hatred. Haven't you seen the three genders? Boy, girl, and trickster. Didn't you read the manuals? There are books on it. The guy I did. did. I did read the manuals, Hold dude. on, now I'm we have to. I'm very well versed in the trickster genders. I am yes. a trickster. Hold on, let me find- this is getting really off topic really fast. I'm gonna look for those books to see if I can find them. I can't find them. Okay, I looked. Um, it's the three books. They're about life advice that you shouldn't follow because they're wrong. Okay, anyway. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, but anyway, that's not what the stream is about. Do you know what the stream is about? Yes, I do, Rainbow. Well, pretend you don't. What is- do you what? know what this stream- pretend you don't. Do you know what this stream oh, okay. is about? I have no idea. Please tell me what this stream is oh, about. Oh, I'm gonna move the curtain out of the way. Drum roll, please. Give me a drum roll, please. Ooh, that's a good drum roll. Da, ta da. It's a thing nobody recognizes. That's because this was my first project. I made this back in middle school. Like I said yesterday on our other live stream, nobody likes themselves in middle school. Please don't kill me. Um. But True. my first project, way before, like, stuff like Darling Demons or any of my other videos, way before that, um, I had Dover Quest. It was a game I'd worked on. It was a story I'd worked on. It was only a game when I became a middle schooler. Um, it was a story I'd worked on since I was a little kid. I worked on it with uh, someone very important to me. We'll just call him Eve for now. Um, uh, after... I don't know if I should get into this on the stream. This might be a bit too personal before we dive right in. Hey, guys, want to hear about my tragic backstory? Just kidding. That's for another video. But after they uh, passed away, I still wanted to, like, finish the story. So I wound up making it into, like, a video game. Uh, I don't think they were alive when it came out. But long story short, it was pretty chill. I liked it a lot. I was proud of it. But, again, again, I was proud of it when I was in middle school, so that's saying something. <laughs> like, um, we can laugh about that. I sucked in middle school. My art was mm, not fantastic. Not saying middle I'm like Da Vinci now, is a but... a very dark time. Middle school was traumatizing. If you're in middle school now and you think, oh, I'm not going to hate myself in the future, just wait. Just give it a year. Just wait. Yeah. Not even more than that. One it's... year. Just wait. <laughs> okay. You're, you're going to experience it. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah, so anyways, I started crying. That's pretty accurate. Thank you, live chat. That is not being shown on the screen. Um, anyway, this is the first game. There are three. There are three Dolber Quest games. Not a lot of people remember they exist, and if you do, you're an OG, because this game... I think we can see how many people have downloaded it. Oh, one, over 1,000 people have seen it. That's crazy. I didn't know that. See, about cool. two years ago. So I think when I actually published the game, I was in freshman year, but I'd been making it when I was in middle school. I only actually finished the game freshman year. Um, a lot of nice comments and a lot of talk about having a hard time downloading it. There's a place where you can see how many people download it. Um, it wasn't a lot last I checked, thank God, because um, well, we're going to go over it here so you don't have to download it, but that's not the point. Um, the point is, we're going to go over some quick notes before we start this actual q and I'm going to play, we're going to play through part of each of the three games, all three of them, because one of them is more recent, and I will say I'm much more proud of the, the prequel than I am the other two games. Um, the first game is actually the one I cringe at the most because I made the most mistakes in it. So, Mar uh, Mika, this is the part where I have to ramble on with all my notes. Yes, it's all right. Okay, epic. Um, cause we, we're like six minutes in. Let's get this thing rolling. Hell yeah. Okay. Let's go. Um, <laughs> I wrote flashcards cause I'm scared. Um, we're going to... We're going to be answering questions about, like, projects, so if you want to start your own or something like Irk and Outcasts, or even make your own video game, or just anything in general, like webcomic, um, I don't know anything else, fan fiction, I guess, uh, we'll go over all of that and we'll answer any questions you have. Um, so, we're just gonna go through that. This is, I want to go over Dole Request because it's my first project to quote-unquote succeed. That's a strong word because it's kind of like majorly unknown. I'm glad for that though, because it's kind of like my own little personal memory and I'm like, oh, like that was nice. And I get really sentimental about it. I love the characters. Um, I have a giant poster on my wall, like I love them, but I did screw up a lot when I was making this game. So eh, you live and learn, but so take everything in this game with a grain of salt because I made it when I was in middle school and published it like freshman year sometime. Um, so cool. I, I'm not going to take the game down. I know I made mistakes in it, but I'm still going to leave the game up. So if people do want to play it for themselves or if other people want to check it out, I'm still going to let them do that. But because it's important to me, like that's why I leave a lot of my old Instagram posts up too. Like you can kind of see some of my really cringy stuff from when I was in middle school. Like you can see all my old art. A lot of people delete that, but I keep it up because... Then whenever people come up to me and they're like, wow, Rainbot, how'd you get that far? And I'm like, oh, I never, st I just kept going. I never stopped. Wow, blah, 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 motivational quote. Go look at my cringy um, fan art from 2017. <laughs> inspirational. It's inspirational because if you scroll down, you'll see I was worse than you. <laughs> wow. I was awful. And now I'm doing this stuff. So if you just keep throwing stuff at the wall, eventually something will stick. So don't give up in your dreams, something or other. Um, okay, so I wanted to make a quick disclaimer about some of the mistakes I remembered off the top of my head, because I made some pretty small-brained beginner mistakes when I was making this game. First of all, I was so insecure about my artwork back then that when I was making the game, there was a, uh, a part where you go up to this robot named Cindy. This is, like, way near, like, the second half of the game, kind of close to the ending from what I remember. It's a long game. It takes hours to play. It is a long game, but somewhere near the end. I'm going to say this because I'm pretty sure nobody would ever notice or find out, but I'm a big kid now, and I'm owning up to all of my mistakes, and that includes this one. Mika, I think you can sympathize and, like, back me up a bit. Yes. <laughs> um, when I was in middle school, I was really insecure about my art. So when I w needed to draw some pony things for this game because I didn't have many pony OCs to use, so I just kind of made designs up off the top of my head and, like, color palettes I found on Google. But what else I found on Google was I Googled, like, other My Little Pony artwork and, like, other reference images, like, other stuff people have sketched and drawn, like... I think I literally took one artist's work and I looked at that and I was like, I want to mimic that exact art style. And then I almost basically copied it, like <laughs> like poses and all. And I don't remember who it was because if I did remember who it was, I would have credited them in the description up somewhere and I would have made a post about it. I don't remember though. And that doesn't mean I want people to go through the game and like try to form a witch hunt. Like, let's find that thing that Rainbot did. Like, that's not what I want. I'm just pointing out I did it because well, I was stupid. I was a kid. So rule number one, 
don't do that. Don't be like me. You do not want yes. to go, even if you're scared, just even if you think your art's going to be bad, just suck it up and put it out there because you never know. Like a lot of people liked my old art and my old art sucked. So I shouldn't have been as insecure about it, but here we are today. And now I have sketchbooks. Like now I never look any up. I never Google references at all anymore. I just have sketch after sketch after sketch. So eventually you'll get better. Uh, Mika, do you have anything to say about like that kind of stuff that you might have done in middle school? Um, I've been talking oh over you God. for a while. Oh, middle school, very interesting. Um, I used to be worse. You used to be worse uh, than me? Just, yeah, I used to be worse. I used to just, oh God, okay. It's fine, we're confession in the confession time. booth. I used to just Safe straight space. up copy OCs and claim them as my own. Um, I don't do that anymore. Every single character I, uh, I make is designed by myself and every single story I write is written by myself um, same if there is like an influence from outside it's very much unintentional um yeah i used to copy ocs <laughs> it was horrible um also references um as long as you got permission from the artist to reference your stuff and like or like use your own photos as, as reference it should be all right but do be, be like careful with artist references um because you know, like, not everyone wants that, like... Yeah, some people have disclaimers about it in their bio now, like, please yeah. don't reference my art. Like, you gotta be respectful of that, it's really important. I, yes, I'm speaking, iffy. I sound like a hypocrite, because I'm someone who did that as a kid, because I didn't know any better, but now I do know better, so I'm telling all you kids, don't do it, it's bad. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're sad old people now, and we know our sins, <laughs> and now we're confessing our sins to you, so yes, don't do it. in the fucking... Even if we're you sitting think, in our wheelchairs, gray sitting, hair. I'm sitting in a wheelchair. It's like an office yeah. chair. <laughs> Want to watch me do a kickflip? No, you can't see it. <laughs> but you wish you could. <laughs> All right. So that was just one of the major mistakes I made. And other stuff was I was really in professional. Like, I didn't know how to do productions with teams. I didn't know um, a lot in general. I'm kind of, like, trying to flip through some of the art in the game. Like, oh, clearly, as you can see by the picture on screen now, I did... Um, I worked with a few other artists for this game, like, I had a few collaborations between some of my friends at the time. Sadly, most of the people I worked on this game with, I'm not really friends with anymore, like, that was forever ago. And one of these people is, like, hates me now. That, but that's a story for another time. Um, blah blah blah, f middle school friends. Um, and they were all really cool, you should check them out. Like, I have credits at the end of the games with all the artists that helped out, like, this was probably... This, the, the origin of when I decided I wanted to host passion projects. I wanted projects to involve other young artists, and I wanted us to work together. So this game, despite all its flaws, it's the reason Urkin Outcasts and other things exist, because it's where I got the idea to start including other people in my work. This is where it all started. Um, so, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Don't reference poses, that's rude. Don't try to copy OCs, that's rude. I didn't copy yes, OCs. I would... If I did, I don't remember. Maybe I did. If I did, I, it wasn't in this game. Like, I can't remember anything in this game that was copied that way. Um, I'm sorry in advance if I'm lying, because I literally just can't remember off the top of my head. So, please do not do the things we did. And that is all I'm gonna say, because I'm sitting here, like, even though I'm final, I've been looking forward to this stream all week just because I wanted to say it on my channel. You know, because you've he been he watching me go, I'm nervous, people are gonna hate me, this is gonna suck. You've been watching me freak out for the past two weeks, <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, um, but you're doing really good right now, Thank so. you. <laughs> I just feel like it's important because I, I don't want people to do the things, I guess both of us did, because yeah. now we can be the teachers and we can, t and now that we know better, we can tell people. Yes. All right, anyway. Um, no, oh, there's my boy, Allison. He's one of my favorite characters. I'm going to do something with him eventually. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Dull Request. Let's get this moving. Dull Request was also my first YouTube upload, like, years ago. If you go down to the very bottom of my channel, where, like, the videos hardly have any views. Like, most of them haven't even reached 1K views, which is, um, eh, which is fine. But, like, I'm kind of glad those are all old. But a lot of my earlier YouTube content was of the Dole Request characters. The very first one was a, a holiday special I did after the second video game, which was a Halloween game. So then we did a video for um, 
December, and then a lot of people liked it. A lot of people is a strong word because it was only like 200 or something at the time, but um, to me that was a lot of people back then, and I was like, whoa, all these people like it. Maybe I could make more YouTube videos. And then I did, and I literally made a video on it, and now I make more YouTube videos. You can listen to how bad my... You can go back and listen to how bad this version of my voice was back then, because I couldn't even go this high. I actually got better at voice acting. Look at that. <laughs> yes, improvement. Improvement. Okay. These characters are really close to me. Um, and this actually, even though this is my first successful project, this wasn't the first version of Doberquest. Like, um, Doberquest was going to be a comic before it was... It went through so many interpretations, like, different versions. Since I was only a kid, it took me, like five years to make just the first game. Once I made the first game, it was a lot easier from there and I could just keep going. Bang, 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 bang. Now I'm doing YouTube. Bang, bang, bang. I know it takes a really long time to get off the ground for that very first project because Dole Request was being worked on for years, like five years, just the first game. Like, uh, and it was originally going to be a webcomic back when I was in middle school and it was chaos. It was a disaster. Like, I can go back on my Instagram if it lets me scroll down that far and look at some of my really old art. And then you guys can not only see how my art style grew since I was in middle school, but also since the first version of Dole Request before we dive into the game. Because, surprise, surprise, boys! You're not just gonna look at the website. We're gonna play the game. Oh, here's one of my... Uh, Kim helped me color this. This is a Pride Month post I did with some of the characters. God, I love the characters so much. They're like my babies. Like, whenever people drew the Dole Request characters, it was like, it made my heart soar into the air. Um, yeah, here's a bunch, there's Allison, Yo-Yo drew that. Here's a bunch of, like, Dole Request comics that I was working on. Yo-Yo also drew the thumbnail. There's my little wooden block and a picture of my, my dad drew me this picture of Einer, one of the characters in the game. Einer is one of my favorites. He was also the main inspiration for Norman. Um, all this Dole Request art, look at that, it's everywhere. Um... But this was only when the game was coming out, like when I was in freshman year slash middle school. We gotta go farther back to see some of the really old stuff. We gotta go way back, past my lineless art phase, past my weird Glenn Willow phase where I was trying to do an online event and it sucked. Uh, all the way back to when I was posting pencil drawings. Like, you can see this. See this? I did that. It was me. Oh, uh, yeah. I used gross filters. Pencils. Like, that art style, that, it actually, it's sad, because it looks a lot like my current art style, but <laughs> slightly Your less polished. Your current art style's a lot better, though. Like, you've improved a shit ton. Am I allowed to swear? Well, you just I did. I'm to <laughs> <swear>. <laughs> less polished, but, like, almost all of my posts are about the Dole Request characters. This, right here, these pictures, right behind, I have these still. This is, Vivian doesn't even look like that anymore. That was, like, one of the first designs for him. But, like, back behind my computer, I can't turn my camera on, but behind my computer, I'm looking right at them. I have them pinned up on my desk, and I never removed oh. them because they were some of my very first concept art for the game, and or the comic, or whatever it was supposed to be, and I was really proud of that. See, here's some other stuff you're going to see, like, oh, the sirens, oh, no name, the Wizard of Oz thing I liked, um... Quentin Von Valentine, who is one of my favorite OCs that I've never used. Um, even my imaginary, even these guys, who... That character was literally a fusion of Randall from Monsters, Inc. and Bill Cipher, so you're welcome. But these two I have stuffed animals of, and I'll if people want to see pictures of my stuffed animals of them, I got them from Budsies or something, I'll show it, but yeah. I want to see them. Well, I don't have my camera on right now. Uh, you can that see sucks. all my, this was going to be a project idea, that was my old Sona, that was going to be a project idea, that was going to be the original DoberQuest webcomic, that character doesn't even exist anymore. Whoops. <laughs> oh, speaking of Ed's world, there's some fan art. Um, We're just going down through it. There's my really old Sona, god, that's from forever ago. There's some more stuff, over the garden wall fan art, because that slaps and it's awesome. God, Andy is one is of so my good. favorite characters I've ever made. Andy's just some weird spider guy in a trench coat, but he's an assassin, and he was going to be in later Dolber Quest stuff, and I might reuse him for Darling Demons if that continues, but beautiful, perfect. Andy, and then the guy right next to him on the left, Presto, who is totally inspired by a Bill Cipher OC. Um, <laughs> is, <laughs> those two, I love them. They're two of my favorite characters of all time. The, no, They're not in any of my current projects. They're not in Urken Outcasts, but... 
They're some of my favorite. Like, you're going to see a lot of posts about Presto and Zane, who are hardly in the Dover Quest games, but they are, like, my favorite thing ever. Oh, wait, no, Presto's in the prequel. I forgot about that. He's one of the main characters then. Uh, Undertale yeah. art. Oh, now we're getting into the good Ritz. stuff. Look at that, guys. Look at all those gross pencil and uh, pen drawings. Look at all the marker everywhere. Oh, my God. Yeah, look at all this. Crayon drawings? <laughs> A picture of wow. me dancing in the dark, <laughs> covered in, like, red lights. I have some of this hang hung up on my wall. I used to have, like, this surrounding my mirror. Oh, I used to do a lot of, like, edgy vent art. Like, I, like look at that. Is, oh, hey, it's me and my motorcycle helmet. Yeah, I ride motorcycles, but... <laughs> That's very cool. I didn't know that. I do. I ride motorcycles and dirt bikes, but I prefer four-wheelers because they're easier to balance. This was the first big piece of fan art I got for a lot of my characters. Most of these characters you're seeing in this image are not in the actual Dover Quest game. Um, some of them made it in, but a lot of them, like, I had a character named Alistair way back before I was into Alistair Hotel, and it's kind of ironic now, but um, Alistair, oh it's spelled different. It's like Alistair, but this guy in the middle, he used to be the main character. Now he doesn't exist. <laughs> Oh my god, and Xavier! Xavier was the character that inspired Rio. Um, it's like this weird goth k kid that doesn't talk because he's mute, and he has, like, headphones, and he likes tech stuff, and yeah, it's basically Rio. <laughs> that was forever ago, though. And Toby's another one of my favorite characters. He's, like, this living stuffed animal. He's based on an actual stuffed animal I have in my closet because I like robots a lot. I got a robot plushie, like a knitted one. I Oh, there's Glitch and Virus. Like, oh... Oh, guys, check it out. That's some of the best art you're gonna see from me. Oh, there is the Toby stuffed animal. He's right there, and I love him. Yeah, if anyone ever draws my old characters, I'm gonna have flashbacks, and I'm gonna be so happy. Oh, yeah. my fucking God. Here's... The, uh, <laughs> yes. the stuffed robot, he's so goofy. I love him. Oh, and this is Alistair. He was my first main character way before Morphus even existed, which is the main character of the game. And since it's been 21 minutes and we're w 22 minutes and we've wasted everyone's time enough, we are going to go back and uh, we're going to actually ignore all this really gross old art. Like, oh, I used to post memes. Ah, uh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I posted a meme on my page. And if you scroll down enough, you can find it because I refuse to delete it. You can see memes on my page and, like, really bad selfies and stuff and all this edgy crap. Oh, there's Xavier with his magic stuff. He's cool. Um, anyway. Gross art and Tumblr memes aside, <laughs> we're going back to the game now. Now we're gonna actually, we're gonna play it. We're gonna play the game. Um, and now we're gonna answer questions about productions. We're gonna answer questions about um, how I made... You can ask about how I made Irk and Outcasts, too, because that's relevant. Um, actually, if you want to know how I started Irk and Outcasts, go to that video I posted in my community tab. A guy named Edifex did an interview, and I literally just gave the entire story for how I made Irk and Outcasts. If you guys want to see that, I'll link it in the description below after the live stream. And You should totally watch it. It's a good video. It's fun. It's cute. Um, anyway, we're going to play the game now. Um, so I'm going to pull that up because I downloaded it. Um, I downloaded my own game. And for a while, we couldn't get it to load because the computer's like, you're downloading malware. And I'm like, I made the game. I didn't. It's not malware. I made it. Like, <laughs> I am your god. Play. <laughs> oh, it's not cropping good. I'm just... Don't mind me. I'm just gonna crop this for the live stream. Oh, so nice. There we go. Now it fits. Um, hey, oh, look at that. I love the font at the bottom. It's just... It's a really beautiful. nice font. It's really yeah. good. Anyway, here's the game with all of my main characters. I love all of them except that guy right there. There's a story behind that guy. The cat. I kind of wish he wasn't on the cover of Dover Quest because he's not my character. Um, I... Another thing I learned, um, kids, I made, when I was first making the Dover Quest games, I wanted them to get popular. Who wouldn't? So I came up to Sleepy Grim, who I think that's still their username. I tried to email them to ask about it before the live stream. Last I checked, they didn't respond, though, so <laughs> whoops. Sleepy Grim was a really popular artist on Instagram, and we talked for a bit. I wanted to... 
I wanted to essentially ask, like, if I feature one of your characters in the game, could you make a post about it? Like, I'll credit you for the character and stuff, because I really like their character named Poncho Kitty, which is obviously the orange cat and the red poncho. And I'm like, if I put the character in the game and you have input about it and you like it, could you post about my game so more people could see it? And they were like, yeah. They never posted about the game. <laughs> It never happened. Wow. <laughs> Even Incredible. when the second game came, I think there were like high school, college kid age when I was doing this. So I probably, I looked back at some of our old messages. It was really cringy. I looked like a really dumb kid, which I was, but, um, yeah. So now there's this random character in my game to someone who probably doesn't even like me. So if I ever do a reboot of Dover Quest, <laughs> wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you might see that next year. I might do like a mini series on my YouTube channel, which is what people actually watch content on. So instead of a game, I'm going to do a mini series on my YouTube channel next year, like way later next year, but it'll be a reboot of the Dole Request story, probably just for the first game, but, and maybe I'll do like mini specials or comics for the other two games, but I want to do a mini series as a condensed version of the first game because the script's there, the characters are there, the art is there. We just need to revamp it a bit and get a completely different character instead of Poncho Kitty because I don't want them in it anymore. <laughs> you live and learn. Everyone makes mistakes. Let's play the game. Okay. Also, one more one more epic gamer detail before I stop talking over Mika and actually let them get a word in. Um, epic. I'm going to do a spin in this chair really fast. Wow, that was a really cool spin. Did you see that? No, of course you didn't. <laughs> I, I sure did. You sure saw did. it? Awesome. Okay. It was a very cool spin. Okay, so blah, blah, blah. Uh, I've wanted my person. I've gone through a lot of different personas over the years. Like even in the when we were going through my Instagram, you probably saw me with like that weird cat mask. Like that was my original Sona when I was an edgy middle schooler. And then I had one like late earlier in high school, which was Reaper essentially. I think the name I went with was Reaper or Professor River. And it's like basically the embodiment of my depression. <laughs> A character. <laughs> Because this is back when uh, she died, and I also lost oh, yeah. my one friend who I'd know. It was one of my first online friends I lost at the time, so of course I was like, I'm gonna vent about it, and everyone's gonna know how sad I am. And I'm like, Why? It, oh broke, it messed I, me up, dude. I that's, feel that so hard. I know. It messed me up. And so, bits of the Dolver Quest games are about Reaper and Rain, not me. Um, that robot right there. You can obviously see it's what eventually came into my current persona, Reaper and Rain combined, which is fair because my original plan was that Rain was like my emotional side and then Reaper was my logical side. So it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Um, now my current Sona is kind of like a combination of the two. But blah, blah, blah. I'm talking too much. I'm sorry. I But... Uh, the So anything in these games, the Dolber Quest games, it's not canon anymore, but that doesn't mean you should completely dismiss it, because a lot of the stuff where, like, River is talking about what happened to them, that's still canon. I will make a video sometime later this week about my Persona's backstory, because yes, people have actually asked about that. So, ask and you shall receive, I will make a video on my origin story, and also how I became a YouTuber. So, that'll not be in live stream form, that'll just be a short video, but... You'll see some parts of the Dover Quest game in the character backstory. Um, anyway, I'm gonna hit the start button now, because... Yeehaw! Yeehaw! Also, there's music in this game made by my friend Amanda, but that was... Uh, it's on mute, I think, for the live stream. Because otherwise it would be too loud. It's really good, though. Maybe I can turn it up and hear it. Oh yeah, listen to that. Can you hear it? I can hear it. Okay, now you can't hear it anymore, because <laughs> I, I want you to not... Okay, before we start, now, everyone in the chat, we will answer questions. The purpose of this live stream, we will answer questions now. Um, yes. Yeah. So I'm going to look at the live chat. It's not on the screen, it's just black, and you see, Once upon a time, there were two gods, a younger and older brother. Oh, classic setup, totally didn't copy My Little Pony. <laughs> and then, if anything... Yeah, middle school sucked for anyone, pretty much. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Amanda's really good. I can probably link them in the description below somewhere, too, if I re remember. If I forget, punch me later. Um, I'll probably forget. Okay, anyone who wants questions. Hi, Corey. Wow, it is Corey Wilder, famous man in live chat. Are we getting a Dolber Quest reboot? 
Yeah, I can't. I'm sorry. I. It's going to be way later next year, like later in the summer, because I just... These characters mean so much to me. They were my first OCs. This was my first project, my first story. Even though I, the first game, it's not fantastic. I really like the other two games, and the characters mean so much to me. Like, I have the poster hanging above my bed. Like... I can't let them die. I have action figures of the characters standing over there. I hand-painted them. We are oh, wow. going to get a Dober Quest reboot in the form of a mini-series. It is not going to be a game again, because screw that. Um, I kind of want to let these games... Not... Die is a harsh word. I kind of just want to let them rest, though. Like, I made these back in middle school. This this video is my goodbye to the Dober Quest games. We're moving on to greater things. We're improving as people and as artists. This is my goodbye to my childhood projects before we move forward with all the videos I've planned for the rest of October. So it means a lot. Um, but yeah, in the next year, maybe around summer, I'm gonna plan on making a Dober Quest reboot, which is like a simplified version of the story, probably. And then more people will know the characters. Okay, anyway, questions. How does one start a show? I'm trying to make one. Okay. Um, it depends what kind of show you want to make. If you want to make something like Urk and Outcasts that's not fully animated, which is what I recommend for your first thing, so you can figure it out. But, um, I normally, first you want to get an audience. Like, I got my audience from doing has Been Hotel videos, as much as I joke about that with you guys. <laughs> I did get my audience, most of my audience from there. So you might want to start doing fandom projects to get more of a following. And then once people are familiar with you and your content, then you can start putting out some of your OCs. You can start asking people who want to collaborate with you. Um, yeah, that's what I'd recommend. Um, how do you get the motivation and time? I'm a workaholic, dude. I have really bad anxiety and really bad depression. If I'm not working on a project, Miko, you've probably seen it firsthand, I will combust. Like, I get yeah. sad. Like, I, I, um, because my mind works faster than anything else. It's why I talk so much. Um, it's because my brain is moving so quickly compared to other people's that I need to constantly be talking or doing something or I explode with sadness. Um, and <laughs> so I normally just work on a lot of stuff because it helps distract my brain. Um, can you be famous? You're asking the wrong guy. Um, I don't even consider myself famous, and I don't really want to, so I have no idea. Should I write a script for an entire web... Co oh, the chat's moving too fast. Uh, should I write a script for an entire webcomic before I start drawing it? Yes. Write the entire... Do an entire rough draft. Do the whole script. Do it a rough draft of the whole story, and then go back to the beginning... And then pretend you knew what you were doing the whole time. Just go through it like, yes. oh, I'm unraveling this slow-burning mystery. It's incredible. But then it's going to look like you knew what you were doing the whole time because you had an outline. Okay, have exactly. you ever done a project that you kind of want to give up on but didn't because you're friend? Yep, that was Darling Demons. <laughs> that, was the, that was the project. I didn't want to work on it at some point, and I kind of rushed it. That was my first video project with other animators. You can still see the stuff on my YouTube channel. It's really cringy. And it was entirely my fault. I wasn't used to working on a team. I didn't know how to manage deadlines, so I was like, give me this now. And I was like, I made the deadlines too quick. Sometimes I still do that. Like, I'm working on it. I know people need more time because life happens, especially this year. But, okay, yeah. Um, I've been there, done that. Yeah. <laughs> How many people worked on this game? Not a lot. Not as many as you'd think. Like, just a handful of people. Like, a handful of my friends back from middle school and freshman year. What software did you use? I'm going rapid fire, Mika, so we can start the game. Uh, what software yes. did you use to, for, the, for the game? I used RenPy to make the game, um, and I used Atom to code it. If you download RenPy and Atom and you watch, like, a few tutorials, it's like a visual novel game. You can't, like, make RPGs and stuff unless you're super sneaky. Um... But yeah, it's really it's really easy to use. I really recommend it for any beginners who want to make a game. Heed my advice this one time. Um, Renpy and Adam, they are amazing engines. It's really good. Um, original inspiration for the main cast. I'll talk about the inspiration for the characters as we go. You were a lot more active than I was in middle school. I do nothing with my OCs and I made an entire game. Again, that's the anxiety thing. Even when I was in middle school, I was a workaholic. I think it's worse now because I have all this trauma and baggage from... Um, being a dumb kid and getting in a lot of online drama like I didn't know how to behave on social media So I wound up getting punched in the face a lot essentially and that's traumas kind of snowballed into super severe anxiety So now I work even more than I did back then, but whatever 
Spacebug, how'd you come up with the idea for an outcast? Go check the video on Edifex channel. I posted about it in my community tab. That covers the entire story of how I made Urkin Outcasts. I'll link it in the description below. Um, blah, blah, blah. How do I make the new Z more not boring into that? Ed, Ed, you sly dog sneaking onto my live stream. Ed effects right there in the live chat. He's the guy who's I made the video with. But uh, Ed, it, it's beautiful the way it is. I like it. I really like the video. I think it's cute. I'll, I'll try to advertise that video a bit more. Anyone watching this live stream? Go watch Ed's video that I'm in. It's really cute. Okay. Absolutely, you should do that. Okay, and now? We're done answering questions right now. Also, yeah, <laughs> they did make Doki Doki Literature Club with Renpai. So that proves it's a good engine. Because that's a really good game. <laughs> anyway, we're done now. Uh, we're going to go over my first mistake making these games. The exposition dump! <laughs> Oh, man. You think Urkin Outcast is front-loaded? Check out this. It's ten minutes long. Ten minutes of reading. Ten minutes? <laughs> of just reading paragraphs. Yeah. We're oh, not gonna exciting. do that. This is already dragging out. So, we're just gonna skip it. We're gonna... We're just gonna... Oh, he looks so sad. Oh, hey, it's Allison. It's that one guy. Okay. Oh, oh, stop. No. Okay. Okay, whatever. Okay, we're gonna stop here. Oh, look at that epic title number. Okay, but whatever. That was long and boring. The point is, I will recap the story for you now. This is the good part of not having to play it yourself. You get me here, and I'm annoying. So I can make the game slightly less annoying. Um, so blah, blah, blah. There were two gods, the elder god and the younger god. Um, Pen is the younger god. They both had two different powers. It's kind of like night and day, yin and yang. Like, Pen was the god of creation. He was the good guy. Um, he was the god of creation and life, essentially. And then the other god, we don't know his name yet. It's just the elder god. For spoiler alert, his name is Brian, and that's why I don't say it right now. <laughs> He's a giant skeleton, and his name is Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love those two so much. Okay, whatever. I'll go back and look at the art of them. Fine. There they are. Skeleton named Brian. So whenever they're talking about the Elder God, they're talking about this guy. Whenever it's the other guy, Penn, it's this dude. Um, so, blah, blah, blah. We actually had a headcanon that Penn had Kermit the Frog's voice when we were doing, like, we used to have voice actors for Dole Request, but then it kind of faded away, and I lost touch with everyone, so now, if I do the reboot, I'll have to get a completely new cast, because it's been years, I don't even know half those people anymore, and it sucks, but, yeah, you live and learn, I say that a lot, uh, I failed that time, I'm not failing now, I think, okay, You're doing good. thank you, okay, blah, 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 the Elder God was jealous of the younger... It's literally Nightmare Moon and Celestia, shut up. Um, it, the, the Elder God was jealous of his younger brother because everyone thought... All the other gods thought he was super cool and hip and that he was youth with the kids for um, being able to create life and stuff. So the Elder God was like, I want the world to be perfect um, and your life sucks. It's not good. These human things, these humans, shit, absolute shit. I hate it. Uh, it's bad. Because he, he was a perfectionist to the point where he was going to wipe out the entire planet just to make it perfect. Um, and Penn is like, okay, well, how about we play a game of chess to determine the fate of the entire universe? And he's like, that's a great idea. And then he cheats. Um, and so the Elder God cheats and he wins the game of chess. I wasn't lying when I said this game was front-loaded. And then, um, so, oh my god, I skipped it again. <laughs> okay. Now we're on to Allison. Those orbs are all magic. There are seven magical, I forget what they're called, um, elements, orbs. elements, orbs, I don't know. There are seven of them. They're all based on the seven deadly sins, because I'm original. Um, the seven sins of humanity that led to its fall. B basically, the Elder God, um, they played chess with living pieces, like actual people down on the earth were the chess pieces. It was a metaphor, it was symbolic, and they were basically fighting a war. But then the elder, elder god cheated by possessing people and, like, having them kill themselves, and, like, he was removing chess pieces from the other side. It's like that meme where it's, like, the smart kids trying to figure out how you're beating them in chess, but you're just eating their chess pieces. Like, it's literally that. Um, <laughs> but with wow. real people instead of chess pieces. <laughs> what an icon. Okay, Allison over here on the right, the guy who's literally all white except for his bow tie, the eyes, and some blood, which is red, and the cheeks, I guess, but um, Allison was one of the seven chosen ones, the seven heroes on 
Penn's team. I know there are more than seven pieces in chess. Shut up. Um, there, Penn sent down his seven warriors. He's like, this is my army. We are going to win. And then they lost. So um, the Elder God now is able to be the god of both life and death, creation and destruction. So he's the big boy. He's wearing the big boy pants. He can do everything now. Um, and then he locks away his brother, Penn. So I think we talk about this in the game dialogue, but I'm just summing it up. So they Penn is sitting in his jail cell, and he's like, this sucks. Uh, maybe I should... Re All my heroes died. But then he's like, I got it. I'll make them not dead anymore. So he uses his, he uses the last of his power to put it into these seven little orbs and like an amulet, and he yeets it down to the earth. And he's like, okay, Allison, you're my dude. You're my chosen dude. You are going to take this fancy necklace and all these glowing ball things, and you're going to essentially, you know, saying this out loud makes me realize how stupid this game was. <laughs> We're going to need to re rewrite it so much for the reboot. Oh, my God. I can't even summarize it. I'm losing my mind. Okay, anyway, let's continue because I'm dying. Uh, the guy does some magic stuff. They lose and they die. They get revived as robots because now that the, the entire earth was flooded after the war ended between the gods and all the gods were killed and the world was flooded so we could get a quote-unquote blank slate, fresh start. Um... So now the Elder God, Brian, now Brian, <laughs> so Brian is ruling over everything. He flooded the entire Brian, earth and he's that. starting over. He didn't expect some of the human life to survive the flood, but they did. And now they built like this little floating city in the sky and they live up in the floating city, like away from the carnage and the flood. Because now the world's a wasteland with mutants and monsters and stuff. So now they just live up on this cool floating island. Um, anyone who didn't die in the flood anyway. Um... We learn more about that in the prequel a little bit, because about the floating island and who was making it. The characters in the prequel are better than the characters in this game, but... Anyway, I'm gonna shut up now. We're just gonna go for it. If anything doesn't make sense later, I'll explain it later. Um, oh, they're called Sinners. That's really original. <laughs> oh, incredible One of the seven story sinners. writing. That's really on the nose. Um, the... I'm reading it. I'm reading the game. Um... So yeah, the planet's basically screwed if they don't... Basically, now it's a really futuristic world that lives in this floating city, and a lot of people are robots now. Uh, but some robots... Robots have spirits, like they have souls, and the souls have to come from somewhere, so they normally come from a source of magic. The seven robots got their spirits from the dead people from... <laughs> the dead people from the original prophecy now it's like a legendary thing like oh all those years ago when the gods fought there were seven heroes and then they s failed but now they're gonna come back someday and they did because they were reincarnated as robots i mean all of them except one guy who somehow survived but the gods didn't notice that one of the seven heroes survived so he just kept living through life and now he's really old but whatever he's still one of the seven We'll see later. Uh, there's the logo. Now the game's starting. Look how riveting this is. 42 minutes in, now we're starting the gameplay. <laughs> what is this, a gameplay. GT? Can't wait. What is this, a GT Live video? Okay, anyway, riveting writing here. <clears throat> I'll actually read some of the game now. Um, You're awoken from your strange tra trance when a cup of water spills over your canvas. You were working on a paint... I can't read, I'm dyslexic. You were working on a painting someone commissioned from you, and considering they had asked for a desert landscape, water may not be the most appropriate accent. Oh, there's my boy. That's probably not good. <laughs> it's my boy, Morphus. He's one of my favorites. I have an action figure of him. I love you. Um, anyway. In your sudden panic, you attempt to wipe the water off. Maybe you have a secret waterbending ability that are only now going to be discovered in an emergency like this. Oh no, you just smeared it and got paint everywhere. Well, that's just perfect. <laughs> Mika, please say something. This dialogue is so bad. I'm sorry. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think. I'm just very concentrated on this intense story. Okay, I'm going to say it. It reminds me of Homestuck. I said it here. Well, that makes sense. I was a Homestuck in middle school. <laughs> I didn't know a lot about it. I mostly knew the fandom content more than the actual comic at this point. Um, but... Oh, uh, yeah. The game thing where it's like, 
Is that the story of Homestuck? Like, people got revived and crap? I need to refresh myself on Homestuck lore. I don't remember any of this. Honestly, same. I'm I glad, remember there I, were candy uh, corns. I'm glad I don't. People. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah, whatever. I should probably just get a fresh start anyway. I felt like that hermit crab was staring into my <laughs> Some of the dialogue is so bad, I can't even read it. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand anything that's going on. I'm sorry. I made it in middle school. Aren't you impressed? Yeah, Look middle at this school movie. writing doesn't make sense. It's edgy and weird. And To be honest, I'm still proud of the game, even though it sucks. Like, I'm still really proud of it. And I'm probably going to put it in yeah. my college portfolio or something. Like, ooh, look at that thing I made. I'm going to entirely reboot it next year. Like, just looking at this on screen, I'm like, they massacred my boy. Morpheus is literally one of my favorite characters ever. All of the Doberquest characters are my favorites. Um, I love them so much. And I'm gonna, I swear to God, I, I'm swearing to everyone watching this live stream, all 35 of you, we are going to reboot Doberquest. It's going to be good. We're, the plot won't be convoluted. It's gonna make sense. I'm gonna simplify it. Mika, I'm gonna bring you down with me. We're gonna beat the crap out of the story until it actually forms yes, something cohesive. Are. I'm so in on that. I'm so on board. Another word of advice, don't overcomplicate things. I made this story so complicated that even now, years in the future, I'm trying to go back and I'm trying to skim through it just from memory and I'm confused. I'm the one who wrote it. Like, So oh, just yeah. try to keep the story simple when you're starting out. Don't front load with exposition. Don't do that kind of stuff. That's a very good tip. I used to have that problem a lot as well. Yeah. So. Okay. Most of these vibrant splotches had been made in a fiery blaze with warm shades of carmine and gold. He's talking about painting. Um, unfortunately, this paint would become unstable within minutes. The surface was already coated with cracks formed when the splattered paint began to harden and dry up. It looks like I used too much paint. Guess I can't help myself. Mixing paints just creates such a pleasing pattern of color with so many more unique shades and hues. Although, you look over the mess across your workspace. It's as if the planet is having a fourth world war, but this time it was between a variety of art supplies. By the way, there's some lore sprinkled in. Like, see, that's how you do good world building. You put it in the dialogue, in the description. Like, you let it happen naturally. Like, oh, a fourth world war. Um, so there was already a third one? Wow, I wonder what caused the third world war. Spoiler alert, it was when the planet flooded and, like, mutants were everywhere. Humans and mutants had this giant war, and it was, like, considered the third world war. Because this takes place, like, centuries in the future from now. If the world is even around then, <laughs> pandemic, but that's how you do actual world building, kids. Don't front load it with exposition. I was doing yeah, things. Yeah, don't do that. I was doing things right, but also not. <laughs> Bombs of oh. paint coating the ground as if the surviving containers of color are left to grieve the loss of their fallen comrades. May your beloved art supplies let rest in peace. Or considering the violently torn up paper towels scattered across the floor, pieces. It really does look like I should restock on art supplies. I should probably make sure my room will be all right while I'm at the market, though. Don't want any more paint spilling. Oh, it's your first choice of the game. M M <laughs> this is such a good game yes. so far. Can I make the choice? Yes, or do you, you can. Wanna? Do you um, want to check your dresser, check your bed, check your closet, or leave the bedroom? Leave the bedroom. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out. Town market, here I come. <laughs> Walking out, transition. <laughs> it's actually been a while since you've been to the market itself. Up, oh. <laughs> up. Oh. <laughs> I forgot how fast the characters slide in. Like it's like, whoop. it's like a nice sliding effect. I really liked using that in these games, and I really like watching it. But whatever, <laughs> it's a bit speedy. Fun. Okay, probably because you've always been so busy helping with the. I don't remember what we're talking about. Uh, I'm. <laughs> I'm glad I retired from my mom, from mom's guard units program. I wasn't ever big enough to compete with the bigger droids built for it anyway. Plus, now the team's in. Plus, now I, I, I can't even read my own dialogue. God damn it. Plus, now I'm the team's investigator. I'm really good at it, and I almost cracked our most recent case. I'm pretty sure that robot burnt down the train station is still alive. I just need some evidence. <coughs> Lore foreshadowing. It's all foreshadowing. <laughs> oh wow. The guy I briefly pointed at, um, if you scroll down in my account, you can see art of him, Timmy. He's like a train conducting robot. Um, that's the robot who burnt down the train station, and Xavier was in, is involved with that kind of stuff later. That one guy that I based Rio on. Um, 
Yes. Yes. And the unit program, basically his mom is like this really big brain scientist. Like she's the smartest person. Literally, okay, professor, this is before I was in Invader Zim. Like this is at the point where I forgot I existed. But now that I remember, I can say this. Imagine Professor Membrane as a blonde woman. It's basically that. Um, <laughs> professor Membrane as a blonde woman. Well, because she's the oh smartest God. person in the world. She built all of the technology on the floating city. She runs the Ivy Council or whatever it's called, the Ivy Collars. Um, they're like basically the Aperture Science, like all the super smarties. Um, and she has a guard program for like droids. She builds all the robot bats. She r builds all the robots. She manufactures everything for the entire um, floating city. So any robot you see in this game, it's very likely that mom, her name is just mom, by the way. Like her real name is Lydia, but it's just mom in the games for a oh, while. Mom, okay. That's mom. Cool. I like that. Anyway, mom. <laughs> Mom's... Mother. Mother. Um, mom is basically the one who built most of the robots. Kind of like the one chick from Futurama, I guess. Um, so, Morpheus was in a guard unit. Like, he was a cop, essentially. He used to be, like, a cop that would take down other robots. Because a lot of robots were rebelling against the humans because they were being treated as slaves and, like, tools. Even though they had spirits because magic and stuff. Um, blah, blah, blah. Who cares? Moving on. Uh, either way, guarding the town was terrible. The thought alone brings back some unpleasant memories. Before you can take your mind off the grim, grim subject, a small buzz from your chest draws your attention back. What was that? Hopefully not what I think it is. <laughs> you fish around in your sweater and let out a small noise of surprise when your metal fingers brush against some sort of locket. After pulling it out and observing the odd piece of jewelry, you see seven empty slots in the locket. A necklace... But I never wear jewelry. Huh, that's odd. Yet it almost feels familiar in some strange way. The locket is letting out a soft hum, and it sparks when you attempt to open it. Locked. Darn it. Maybe there's still a way to open it. Perhaps some sort of key or code. This is another character, by the way. I know there's, like, a lag, so you can't see what I'm seeing on my screen, but... <laughs> I'm, I'm looking. You're invested. Um... <laughs> Perhaps some sort of key or code. I don't know if I should do character voices. Should I do character voices? Yes, you should. You okay. should definitely do character Perhaps voices. Perhaps some sort of key or code. I can't do a Kermit the Frog voice. Don't make me. We need Cory <laughs> here to do this. Yeah, like a pattern. Well, that's not exactly correct, but it's an interesting theory. Thanks. Wait, what? <laughs> it's not a pattern, Allison. It's more of a sequence. No, I mean... You pull out the strange locket closer and attempt to examine what could be the source of this new voice. Are you inside the necklace? No, that would probably be ah! I'm dyslexic. No, that would probably be very cramped considering the locket is very small. But the locket is what I'm channeling my voice through, so it was still a good observation. Who are you and why do I have your locket thing? Oh, I'm terribly sorry for not mentioning myself before. My name is Penn. It's the guy. <laughs> it's him. It's him. He's relevant. He's relevant. That ten minute intro you had to read, it meant something. My name is Penn, but not a lot of people remember me now, so it's not unusual for you to be confused. Well, this is the weirdest conversation I've had in my life, but it's nice to meet you too. I apologize again. I feel like this script, even though it's really old and cringy, you can see a lot of my personality seeping through, like, the dialogue. Like, you can tell this is something I wrote, and I, that's why I'm still kind of like, oh, it's cute, it's charming. Um, I apologize again for the inconvenience, but are you not Allison? It's that other guy. Oh, now there's another choice. Um, you can say, my name is Morphus, which is the character's actual name. You can ask, who wants to know? Or you can say, yeah, I'm Allison. Allison is the pale guy from the intro. What do you want to answer oh. with? Um, Malibu uh, just said in the chat that they wanted... To make the next choice. I don't know if they're still there. Malibu, Malibu, if Malibu you're still here, go can you for it. Make yourself known. Is that okay for you? Go for it, Malibu. Do it. Give me the choice. Malibu's one of the artists who works on Urkin Outcast. They're making the sprites yes. for the analysis videos. You'll see the first few analysis videos probably next week. Okay, who wants to know? That that's very rude. Here we go. Uh, oh yeah. Who wants to know? Um, still me, Pen. I would like to know. How can I be sure you're not Jimmy himself in disguise? Do you know any other people in my situation? Wait, do you not get the reference? I'm afraid I do not. I just want to know your name. You know what's funny? 
I don't get that reference. <laughs> I don't get that reference. I you think know what's even funnier? I don't either. I can't tell you what, what that's a reference to. Jimmy in disguise. Like Jimmy Neutron? Jimmy in disguise. I, <laughs> I, I don't know what that's referencing. What was I doing? I don't know. Anyway. Darn it. My name is Morpheus, and I'm honestly a bit disappointed. I thought everyone knows that song. It's a song. <laughs> huh? It's a song. Jimmy in disguise, and it's a song. Um, Aqua Teen Forest, perhaps? Um, anyone in the live chat, if you can come up with, um, a song about some guy named Jimmy who's in disguises, I would really like to know, because <laughs> I am lost. Anyway, let's just say I don't get around much. Yeah, neither do I. What the hell? <laughs> I am a god, after all. I don't know much about what goes on in your city or the apocalyptic wasteland below it. You're a god? Yes. The I'm big god skeleton, you are. The big skeleton guy that crazy people around town hand out pamphlets about? All the stuff about the end of the world? It's hard to take seriously when half your followers wear flower necklaces. Sorry, Pen. If they're worshipping a skeleton that might destroy Earth, I'm afraid that's my brother. Why did I even recap it? They're recapping it here. <laughs> Like, this is giving me a better summary. This is giving you guys a better summary than the half-assed one I did. <laughs> this is good world building. What was I doing? But he's the only god I've ever heard of. Except for this weird dream I just had. That mentioned two gods, and one of them was... Your process takes a moment as you stare down at the amulet with seven marks. You begin to realize how dumb you must look. Anyone else would have probably pieced this whole thing together in seconds, but you had to take your sweet, sweet time. By this, he's talking about the intro scene. I skipped it, but that was a dream sequence, essentially. So, like, you're dreaming about the prophecy and um, the gods, and uh, who cares? Oh, wow. Let's keep going. <laughs> who cares? Um, How do you feel about dreaming about something just... so prophetic? Hold on, I'll reconnect. Oh, no! Mika! Oh, you're here. <laughs> Mika, are you with us? Guys, Mika died because I'm being boring. I have to keep going. I, we, we have to go on without her. Uh, without them. We have to go on without them, and when they get back, um, we will rejoice. Oh, there they go. In the way. Anyway, I'll keep going. Um, wait a minute. Are you the younger god from my dream? It was actually a vision I sent down to remind Allison what had happened. I'd never revived anyone before, but it was only my, but it was my only chance. I wasn't sure if he'd keep his memories or not. So the dream sequence it was a vision that was intended for Allison, aka that pale white guy, that <laughs> white guy, that um, the one that was the original owner of the amulet. He was the guy. He was the leader of the seven heroes. He was the original big Chad. Like, I don't know why I said Chad, but <laughs> Matt, Mika, are you back yet? If you're back, I can't hear you, Mika. Okay, this is sad. Goodbye. Um. I'm alone now, and I'm sad and scared. Okay. It was actually a vision I sent down to remind Allison of what had happened. I'd never revived anyone before, but it was my only chance. I wasn't sure if he'd keep his memories or not. Next option. Next choice. Um, who's... I know Mika died, guys. Calm down. Um, um who's Allison? Or, fair enough, I'll skip your explanation. I'm gonna click who's Allison, because we need... I'm gonna make a big director choice. You kind of need the exposition, because I butchered the <laughs> summary in the beginning. He was the holder of this amulet in our first chess game. Allison did his best to find all seven of you, because you were the only beings left on Earth that I had created myself. You seven are the only ones I that could survive against my brother's magic, and that's because I made you to be opposites of his own. But he cheated. Now that I see how his magic has drove you seven to commit such unspeakable acts against each other, aka the seven sins that it's talking about, it's too late for me to fix it myself. After Allison watched you fight, three of you had already died before he could stop my brother from corrupting you. Unable to complete the spell I gave him without all seven sources of magic, he killed the survivors, including himself, so I could use the rest of my power to revive your souls into metal bodies, more resistant to a god's powers. Now that I'm locked away, and my brother has stolen magic stolen my magic, I only have enough left to speak I only have enough power left to speak with you through this amulet. Mika, are you back yet? Mika, what happened? Oh, Mika's having connection issues. Okay. 
Um, well, Miga has a seizure in the corner. We'll keep going. So basically, a better summary of what I was butchering earlier was what we just went over. Allison was the original holder of the amulet. He was in charge of the seven heroes that Penn created with their magic, specifically to fight against their older brother in the living chess game um, over the fate of the universe, technically. Um, the Elder God cheated and drove the seven players mad and had them all kill each other. But then the spell that Allison had been planning with the amulet, the one that was going to help them win, it wouldn't work without all seven people. So he had to kill the others so they could get a fresh start. And then Penn revived them into metal bodies, a.k.a. robots. Haha, <laughs> robots. Um, I'm obsessed with robots. Rainbot, it's in the name. Yeah, I'm obsessed. Um, so basically... Now that they were all revived into machines, aka non-organic beings, they were still alive because of the magic in their chest, but they, the Elder God couldn't control them anymore. He couldn't possess them. Or he, he wasn't supposed to be able to. I think that gets... I think later in the game he possesses one of them for like a few seconds, but he can't actually drive them to do anything more than talking because he doesn't have as much power over robots. Anyway, we're gonna keep going now. Um, however, now that I've brought all seven of you back to life... The seven souls have been scattered throughout your floating city. I can't find any of them except you. This was the only signal I could reach. So I'm one of those sin sinners you... <laughs> edgy. So I'm one of those sinners you brought back? I'm afraid so. Then what's your plan now? I don't exactly know any magic. I need you to do as Allison had done long ago. I assume you at least remember that part? Collect all seven souls and redeem their sins so they're, they're pure... Collect all seven souls and redeem their sins so they're pure again. And then I can use their magic to stop the world from ending. That's a lot of pressure for an emotionally unbalanced teenager. You know that, right? I have no doubt that you'll be able to succeed, Morphus. I've met you for five minutes, and I'm really confident. <laughs> um, you've already got the first out of the seven. You just need to redeem it. Really? Where? All right, it's me. <laughs> you just need to admit to any unlawful acts that you've done. Anything come to mind? What essentially happened is when the Elder God used his magic to corrupt the seven heroes... They committed, like, sins that made their magic corrupted. Um, so to redeem their magic now that they're revived, so they can use the amulet to essentially defeat Penn's brother now, um, we need to... This is getting boring, I'm sorry. We need to um, redeem all the sins. So you have to go around... The game's goal is you go through it looking... You have, like, three days or something. You're looking for the seven sinners... You're trying to redeem their sins by having them talk about their tragic backstories, and then you, like, have them learn a life lesson. That's something it... Um, okay. Anything come to mind? The question brings you back to where you started, thinking about your mom's guard unit program. Yeah, I remember it. Wonderful. Then all you do... Great, I'm glad you remember that awful thing. There was a meme going around, like, forever ago for Dover Quest, and the meme... Mika, is that you? Yes, it's me. Ah, oh, you're alive. You missed I'm a lot so of important sorry. information. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh my god, it's uh, so fine. <laughs> my connection is like so Good. shitty. I'm so sorry. I live in a literal fucking hole. It's literally fine. Thank okay. you. Anyway, I'm here from my phone now, so my audio quality might be worse. I'm sorry. It's all good. All good in the hood. Okay. People are only here for me. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm glad you're back, though. Now we can goof around again. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, okay, basically, the goal of the game is you're Morphous. You got this magic necklace from some god, and you need to help the god defeat his evil brother. So you're going to go around the planet... For, the, for, like, a limited time frame. I think it's, like, the next three days. Um, and you're going to use this magical necklace to find the seven heroes, like, the revived... Ver like, their, their reincarnations, the revived ones. Um, and you're going to redeem the sins they committed in this life or their past life. Um, mostly the past life. And then you take those sins, you redeem them, like, beep, beep, boop, on the magic necklace. And then once you get all seven collected Pokemon-style catch them all um, then you have enough magic to launch a super attack and then, like, basically punch the god in the face and put a force field around Earth so he can't flood it again. Because he's planning to flood the Earth again in a few days. That's kind of why there's a deadline. Now that oh, we know that, I think well, we can Well, I know skip. a lot about punching gods in the face, so... Yeah. 
Okay, now I think we can skip. Oh, never mind. There's like a scene here. Um, but now whenever they're talking about exposition, from this point on, I'm gonna skip through a lot of the game because we want to get through as much of it as possible, so I can answer questions along the way. I just needed like a solid 20 minutes to go through the beginning of the game because it's really front loaded and there's a lot of exposition and it's confusing. Okay. Anyway. Mm -mm. Well, it was last year, but I. Morpheus. Oh, I got to do voice. Um. Huh. Oh, it's the cop. Um. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I love you, Copper. People are gonna hate you now because of this year's event. Copper, you're one of my favorite characters. No, Copper, you look like Optimus Prime and I love you. Copper looks like a Transformer. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you've just been mumbling to yourself for nearly eight minutes. Just kind of standing in the middle of our living room. Are you okay? Oh yeah, Morpheus has a giant family. He has a lot of siblings. <laughs> Oh, God. And then there are more in the prequel. There's so many of them. Oh, my God. Um, oh, sorry, Copper. I was just zoning out for a bit there. That's all. If you say so. But uh, how's your investigation going? Great. I'm getting a lot done, and I think I've almost cracked it. It was the station manager. I just know it. Good, good. But, yeah, uh... Just to clarify, um, if you can't tell, you can probably pick put the pieces together. Um, Morpheus used to work on the security team for his mom as, like, the cop, and he'd, like, go around basically arresting and beating up and, to some points, killing um, rebel robots that were causing troubles for the humans in the city. He, did, he, was, he was traumatized by an incident where he, like, when he killed someone and went too far, he was traumatized by that, though, so he doesn't do it anymore. Now he's just the investigator... Like, he helps lead the investigations. He doesn't actually do any of the hands-on work. He's behind the scenes. You can probably guess that Copper works on that, right? Like, Mika? Oh, no. my <laughs> Mika. Are you still with us? Yes, I am still with you. I am very intently listening to your uh, talking. <laughs> Epic. But I'm assuming you can put two and two together. You know, okay, Copper is working on the guard that Morpheus is... Now just doing investigations for you can put that together. Yes, I I have a little bit of brain power left, so we are I sharing got the that one. Mom said it's my turn on the brain cell. Okay, mm, but it's never my turn on the brain cell. It's not. I can barely form a coherent sentence. Okay. Anyway, um, but yeah, um, you're fired. <laughs> what? But I'm your little brother. Then I guess you can hold two titles. One being my little brother, and the other being fired. <laughs> oh my god, that's brutal. <laughs> no okay, one else is, in, is invested in this game as me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> middle school me. That was funny, I'll give you that. That was pretty funny. <laughs> it was. It was it funny. Was. That's so unfair. I did everything you needed me to. I was just about to think about what you guys made me do on the guard city. I stabbed boss, and I'm pretty sure he's dead. And I'm pretty sh and I'm still very upset about that. Mom was the one with the idea, not me. Why don't you take it up with her? Me and Sky have to head to work with the other security bots now. Okay, we get a new option, some gameplay. Um, I'll think about it. Sure, I'll go talk to her. Fine, go to your fancy guard post. I don't need this. The last one. <laughs> the last one. <laughs> I know. I'm better than that anyway. Are you sure you won't be lonely? I'm not lonely because I have, uh, art stuff. That sounded much less pathetic yeah, in your yeah, head, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Everyone on the Urkin Outcast team be like. <laughs> that sounded much less pathetic in your head, but whatever. <laughs> okay, some of this is actually pretty funny. Like, middle school me, you got some chops. You get, I'll give it to you. Yeah, you got you got some funnies, bro. There's some funny lines. Not not all of it's good, but there's some funny lines. Um, all right. Uh, see you later, Morpheus. Copper shifts awkwardly, stu sh awkwardly shuffling off towards the doorway. Copper is just the really awkward, like oldest brother. Like he doesn't know what to do. He just kind of awkwardly goes, "Okay, cool," and like leaves. <laughs> He's really socially awkward, and I love him. Sky trudges towards the stairs after being called, a low groan of protest leaving the tired bot before he paused for a moment to acknowledge you. That went well. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> oh, good morning, Sky. Mornings aren't good, so don't talk to me during them. Although afternoons tend to disappoint me too, so don't talk then either. 
But worst of all is night. You know what? Just don't talk to me. <laughs> what a bitch! <laughs> I, I love. That's, I love. That's your other brother. You have Copper, Sky, and Bella are your siblings. You're the youngest. Um, your two elder brothers then exit the house, heading off towards the city's police station for today's assignments. Sky was always in a bitter mood, so that came to no surprise, but Copper seemed a bit less stoic today, much more anxious. Odd. Wait a minute, who cares about that? You just got fired! Fired? You can't Hold believe on, it! gonna die? <laughs> the world's doomed, but I'm more focused on the fact that I got fired. <laughs> All of your siblings get to work for mom's companies, and even if you don't like fighting other bots, that doesn't mean you should not be allowed to help. Morpheus? Oh, sorry, I almost forgot you were there. <laughs> I kind of hid you in my sweater. That's alright, I can't see much with this amulet anyway. But did you say you stabbed someone? <laughs> Oh, yeah, that was oh, a while yeah. ago, actually. <laughs> so casual. <laughs> well, why don't you confess to that? You could take charge... You could charge your part of the amulet now, unless you aren't ready to talk about it. Hey, I am fully capable of talking about my feelings. You don't need to baby me. <laughs> you probably shouldn't <laughs> be talking... you. It is me. <laughs> Says the most emotionally unstable person ever. <laughs> uh. You probably shouldn't be talking back to a god, but hey, if he wants your help, he's probably gonna have to deal with some teenage moods, mood swings. <laughs> Even so, you take note to keep yourself in check. Does that mean you're ready? Eh, as ready as, as, ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> oh, this was years before that song came out, but now I want an animatic of it. Ready as I'll ever be. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Alright, start whenever you can. I hope you're super not bored. The silence is deafening. Yes. Okay, what, what should I start? Hold on, hold on. I just asked so that you weren't bored. Because of the delay, you bored. can't read the screen. I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm kind of distant. I'm not used to having an audience. You think I'm used so, to that? <laughs> I'm not. I'm sorry, man. Like, you're a YouTuber. Like, you oh, you said the Y word. My weakness, you said the word. Oh. You kill sensation, Raymond. You you have an audience, man. You talk Ugh. to people. All I do is sit in my room and act like I'm social. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, are there any questions in the live chat? This inspired me to review um, my own script, which I just remembered was inspired by Darling Demons. Hey! Nice! Hell Yeah! Darling Demons is already you getting a reboot. Dude. I feel like I should have rebooted Dover Quest first, but um, I'm re I rebooted I'm rebooting Darling Demons. You're gonna see a teaser for that sometime before the end of the year. It's been taking a little while because some parts of that are fully animated, so it's been taking a little bit. I'm really excited though. I have two project managers, August and Alice. Uh, they've been helping me a lot with running the reboot because for the past two months I've been really busy with Irk and Outcast, so they auditioned and volunteered to work on darling demons like they would manage things while i was gone and, and i feel guilty about that i because i'm coming on and i feel like the time traveler's wife like i'm looking around and i'm like and these people are like look at this stuff we were doing rain and i'm like i didn't even know that existed like i feel so out of touch now so i'm trying to get caught up with the reboot now that the, the next few months i'm going to be more available to work on it anyway um back to this game we're going to start skipping stuff now um blah 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 Yay, this is skipping. the thing i already talked about if you want to read it, do it on your own time. Oh, by the way, this is partially a horror game. Not really a horror game, but, like, there's some stuff in it, like gore. Here's the first thing of gore. Um, that character is boss. This is the robot that you, um, killed. <laughs> he was, uh, oh. he was declared a criminal. Like, he was seen as a criminal and an outcast, so he was rebelling against humans. Um... And you had to, you were assigned to go take care of him, even though he used to be one of your best friends. And then you just took out your whip, because Morpheus has a whip, like he's a cowboy, Indiana Jones type thing, that's why he wears that weird hat. Like, he literally, like, you wrap the rope around, you wrap the whip around his neck and just strangle him until, like, his head pops off, I'm pretty sure. And then he died, for obvious oh, reasons. Oh, holy shit, okay. Damn. Yeah, uh, the fun. middle school, you was very violent. Middle school me read a lot of creepy pasta. <laughs> <laughs> middle school me wasn't allowed to draw blood middle school me had someone <laughs> draw their arm getting ripped off um oh. um yeah he's oh. beat up i really like this scene all right let's skip it 
Oh, I like this scene. Well, uh. enough from that scene. Do you want to actually go through this scene, or do you just want to skip? Um, you know what happens. Skip. Yeah, we know what happens. I thought we were friends. Ah, uh, no, dead. It's really graphic. Uh, Morpheus is like, I didn't mean to kill him. Just meant to choke him a little. <laughs> I just got carried away. And it's like, you, you didn't mean to kill a guy. You popped his head off. <laughs> okay. And it's like, um... It felt so familiar, almost like I've done something like this before. But why would I ever want to? It was awful. Morpheus, do you not remember your previous life? No shit. Um, Morpheus, like, none of the seven remember their previous lives before they were reincarnated, aka, like, who they were as the seven heroes. Um, the reason you were killed back during the first game was because you were stabbed a mutant, another one of the seven holders. Morpheus was the first one of the group to get possessed by the Elder God, and then he immediately killed one of the other members and caused, like, basically chaos and anarchy. Um, and he's like, what? Yeah, you killed someone. Oh, hey, look at that. Um, they never knew your name because you'd been killed by before Allison had the chance to speak with you, but you were under my brother's influence. Oh, hey, there's Boss, and there's his poorly drawn whip. Um, you were the one... Uh, you were the one he used to cheat. When you killed the mutant, we had to throw the game. A soft hologram. Okay, basically, you're just seeing it happen. You killed this fish mutant guy named Samson, or Samuel. It's one of the two. I swear I remember my character's names. Um, whatever. Um, you killed him. It was bad. That was your sin. This is what Morpheus looked like in his past life. I think his name was Charlie. I don't remember. Uh, going, moving on. Well, that was awful. Yeah, tell me about it. I had to write that. Um... Skipping, skipping, skipping. Hey, got the first of the seven things. The sin of wrath. Thanks, text, for telling me that. Skipping, skipping. Uh, okay, wait. What does that mean? You have redeemed one out of seven revived spirits. Wonderful job, Morpheus. So I was wrath? Presumably because you were so violent. But that's good. We're off to a quick start. I suppose you are, but now isn't the time for celebration. There are still six left. Oh, right. Don't worry, Pen. I'll have the seven in no time. And then you won't have to worry about a thing. That's a nice thought. Thank you, Morpheus. One out of seven redemptions collected. You have three days left until the end of the world. Use your time wisely and collect the remaining spirits. There's the game's objective. An hour and 16 minutes in. <laughs> Woo! Okay. We did it! <laughs> yeah, we did it! We beat the game! No, okay. Yes, we're... <laughs> we beat the game! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> No. Goal request speed run, dude. Oh, we're gonna speed run it in a minute. Now that we've got through the first part of the game and people get the gist, we're gonna just speed run it just so we can meet all the other characters and then like review the other two games. We're just gonna run through yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I was already gonna head to oh, the market, so like, maybe I could look there hold first. On. If you'd like, uh, huh? Huh? Like, if you just want the game, sorry. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Let me speak. Let me speak. Good on me. Um. Yes, I speak now. Um, if you want. For if the game's just in the background, I can answer some questions, like art 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 related questions in the chat, because I'm sure there's been like a few people who ask stuff. Um, um, only if you'd like. I'm not sure though. So yeah, you guys can start asking questions, and Mika, when you see like a really good question, we should answer. You can let me know. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that was your introduction to Dolber Quest. If you want to play the rest of the game. I already told you about all the art I did wrong. I told you about the stuff I looked up on Google. So if you find it in the game, don't punch me in the face. We already talked about it. Please don't punch me in the face. It is really risky of me to just go out on my YouTube channel and say, I copied art from Google. Like, that was... Like, I copied the poses and stuff, and I basically... Because I was scared, and I didn't think people would like it. Then again, I was in middle school. Then again, it's still a published game. Like, you can get it for free and just play it for shits and giggles. It's on Game Jolt if you want to play through the whole game. I will warn you that it is a few hours long, um, because I'm a psychopath. But it's fun. It's cute. It's harmless. Um, or if you just want to wait till the reboot, you can just wait till the reboot. That'll be sometime next year. Anyway, um, look yes. for what? I'm only going to stop when we have important character interactions. Otherwise, I'm going to skip. Um, so this is an important one. Um, you look kind of zoned out. I don't know if Copper already passed on my advice, but there are better places to do- There's a spelling error in the text. <laughs> I used the wrong there. There's a spelling error in the text. <laughs> Mika, I need you to kill me. <laughs> It kills you, but in a loving way. Oh, in a loving way, Wait, thanks. Wait, hold on. Bam, you're dead. 
in a good way. I lived a good life. <laughs> 18 years old. What a way to go. <laughs> anyway. Okay. No, this is Bella, your sister. Um, I don't. I mentioned her earlier. I don't know if Copper already passed on my advice, but there are better places to daydream than the middle of the living room. Yeah, I know that. The living room is just, um, more cozy. All right, but don't get too attached, little bro. We don't want you growing old and dying just standing here. Of course, then we couldn't really call it a living room. Oh, there's an option. I guess you make a valid argument. That's a bit mean to say, isn't it? I don't have time for your jokes right now. What do you want to say? Mika. Um, wait, wait, wait. Um, wait, wait, wait. Uh, I, I'm thinking my, my brain is working. My brain is working. I currently do not have the brain cell, okay? The brain cell is somewhere else. It's, it's, it's with you, okay? I have the um, brain cell, but I'm giving it to you to pick what we do. Thank you, thank you. Um... I don't have time for your jokes right now. Go with that. I, just I gotta go save the world, sister. <laughs> I don't have time for this crap and your dumb puns, Sans. I gotta go save the world. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm in a bit of right rush right now. Sorry. Wow, you're no fun today. Whoop. Anyway, did you hear the news? That I just got fired by my own family? Yeah, I got it. Yikes, don't take it the wrong way, little bro. Besides, now you got more free time, like me. But if it bugs you so much, why don't you go talk to mom about it? Okay, here's your option. Yeah, I'll go talk to her now, or I actually have to go to the market right now. I'm going to pick for you. We're going to go talk to mom, just so you can see what she looks okay. like. We're going to skip most of the conversation. I do want to see what she looks like. Blonde professor membrane. <laughs> and it's funny, because that was back when I forgot invaderism existed. So the membrane wasn't even an influence. But like looking back, I'm like, they look similar. Like, it's weird. <laughs> Nice. She's upstairs in her lab. Probably doing more science stuff. What the? A violent... Oh, my boy! My boy. I love this character. I, I have a voice for this character because back when we had voice actors, I was the one voicing this character. And he's one of my favorites. Ooh. Ahem. A violent crash outside. Oh, yeah. A violent crash outside interrupts your conversation, however, and you can't help but gawk at the fact that your sister is completely unfazed by it. Yet when an obnoxiously loud voice calls out and the, dorms, the door slams open, you let out a wheeze of relief when Bella's friend strides in. What's up, Morpheus? <laughs> it's hard to do Russian accent when I am half asleep, and also it is very hard to do it with slang terms. What's up, Morpheus? <laughs> that name's hard to say with that accent. The flames... I'm sorry for anyone Russian watching that I'm offending, like, so much. So, I'm sorry. The flames dancing you around his... You need to roll the R, bro. You I don't know how to, to roll like... the R. I just know that Hercules is Russian. And I have to do the voice. <laughs> it's you important. have to do the voice, bro. I have to do the voice. It is very important to me. <laughs> You're doing very, very well. I am very proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> the flames dancing <laughs> around his head are dangerously close to burning your ceiling, much to your disliking. Yet when he greets you, your thoughts pause a bit. Hercules has always had a strange voice. It sounds like a heavy Russian accent of some sort. But by the way he slurs his words, it makes it a bit hard to understand. Maybe it's just his code. Hercules, did you seriously crash again? It isn't crashing. I like to land with style. And the volume to disturb the whole neighborhood, apparently. I love Are we him. just going to ignore the fact that Hercules probably shouldn't be standing inside the house? He could burn the place down. Hey, don't harsh his vibe. Yeah, whatever that means. Uh, whatever, just don't blame me if you set the living room on fire. Why are you so worried, Morpheus? Am I too hot for you to handle? Ugh. Damn. My visit will be quick, don't sweat it. Didn't you know that the fire is faster than the cold? Well, uh... Wait, doesn't that ma that doesn't make any sense. How could heat be faster than cold? Because you can't catch a cold. Uh, because you can catch a cold. Wow, great joke. Oh my gods, I'm leaving. Make sure to listen to the air conditioning on your way out. Why in the world would I listen to the air conditioning? Well, you wouldn't want to be rude. There's another spelling error. <laughs> well, you wouldn't want to be rude. After all, he is your biggest fan. I hate this family and everyone associated with it. You quickly <laughs> rush upstairs before any more jokes can be made, rushing towards the laboratory at the end of the hall with an extended groan of irritation. This is back when my peak comedy... Now my peak form of comedy is people screaming. Back then it was wordplay and, like, puns, obviously. The God, amulet seems to be so good. Okay, here. No, right, this is important. Listen, 
The amulet seems to be buzzing slightly, as if Hercules' presence disturbed it somehow. Well, there's no way he could be one of the seven. Hercules is far too brash and careless. That'd just be ridiculous. The fire must have just gotten pen anxious. Yeah, that's it. Okay, we're going upstairs that's now. That's ridiculous. That's stupid. The, the impulsive dude could have not sinned. <laughs> there's no way. Okay, you're in the lab. Mom, I need to talk to you about something before I leave. There's your mom. What is it, dear? I really mom, need mom, to be mom. working right now. Uh, she turns to face you. Is this about staying in the laboratory too much? Morpheus, you know I love my work and I'm very con and I'm very content here. No, it's not that. Then what is it? Um, actu uh, why don't you want me in the security unit? Actually, it's nothing. Never mind. I'm just gonna say never mind because we're skipping this part. I guess I just wanted an okay. excuse to come see you because you've been so busy lately. Well, that's very thoughtful, Morpheus. I appreciate it. Anyway, I'm gonna skip this part. Um. <laughs> Oh, and they're talking about how Morpheus was built to be a killing machine. It's like, oh, well, I built you to be a killing machine. And you were that's why you were so good as a guard. Like, and that's why you killed that one guy. And you're like, excuse me. Like, that offends you a lot. And it makes you even more upset. So then um, you're asking, I'm going <laughs> to the market. You're built for murder. <laughs> yeah, she literally built you to be a murder machine. But it makes you uncomfortable now that she's, like, talking to you about it. So you're like, okay. um, And, she, and it's like, why are you going to the market? Um, I need some art supplies. That's it? More art supplies? Are you still doing all that art nonsense? Morpheus, only moronic humans should engage in such pointless activities. But I really like to draw. I'm sorry, Morpheus, but you can't like anything. You're a machine. Liking art is not near coding. That's not how I programmed you. Well, maybe I'm learning to try new things. You are not a human being. You're a machine. You can't be able to learn that unless... What? Oh, Morpheus, you're starting to develop your more interactive programming. That's wonderful news. I'm so proud of my little killer bot. Soon you might even fool your own opponents in battle with such nonsense. Go ahead and get whatever you need in the market. You've earned it. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Go to the market. Ah, the lovely city of lights. At any time of day, the area was practically glistens with a vibrant shade of pink. And eh, this is an excuse for why the background's pink. Walking, 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 walking. Someone runs by and you're like, yo, you're in my personal bubble. And then you're at the lemonade stand where it's spelled wrong on purpose. Um... As you step up to the, this is a character interaction. As you stepped up to the quaint stand, you see a cool picture of lemonade seated upon the shop's counter. Stacks of cups are neatly organized. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Yet before you could take a breath, two small figures have already pounced up from behind this table, stand's table. I speak English. Eager to grab your attention. If anyone ever draws fan art of this game, can I politely request don't make fan art of Poncho Kitty? Because it's not my character and... Sleepy Grim never even posted about Dolber Quest, like, so it would just be weird for them to be randomly tagged in fan art of something they never even went through with, I guess. If you're gonna draw the lemonade stand, just kind of draw a rain, like, I'm gonna re- I'm gonna redesign- I'm gonna make a new character instead of Poncho Kitty anyway for the reboot. I'll, it'll probably be one of my old characters, like, Ro. Like, if you want to draw this scene, draw Ro. Uh, Roy- Ro is a character on my toy house. They're my- Mika, you know who they are. They're the ghost dog yeah, that has, I like, do. rainbow hair. They're very cool. He's a cutie, so if you draw fan art, Ro is probably the one I'm going to put in this scene instead, because I really like Ro. I need to use him. Okay. Greetings and salutations, my fellow machine. Yes, yes, hello. Oh, um, hello. Sorry, you startled me there. Who are you two? No worries, not at all. Welcome to the lemonade stand. Yeah, you're reading it right. Lemon Aid. Picture us as a pair of helpers here to assist you during this game, but with a pinch of sour feedback. Game? Never mind that last part. <laughs> My name is Rain, and I highly- Oh yeah, this game gets meta because of the stuff about Reaper that I mentioned. Again, some of it's canon to my character's backstory, so don't just completely dismiss it. Like, if you want to learn more about my persona, the stuff in this game is still relevant. Like, it's stuff that happened in my origin story, but the way it's like... God, I sound so edgy. Um, but the way it happens in this game, some of the events of this game don't actually happen. Like, it's it's weird. It's a mix of canon and, and imagination stuff. Like, whatever, I'll make a video on it later this week. My name is Rain. This is not me. This is a character. This isn't even my persona. It's a character. To clarify, um, and I highly doubt my partner here needs an introduction. Well, a name would have helped, but looking at the strange cat's bright red poncho gives you a good, a good enough idea of what you'll be calling them. What are you doing in the city today? I'm actually on my way to the market right now. The market? My good sir, that's such a good waste of time compared to our miraculous sales. Yep. Nothing compares to our superior sales strategies. Isn't that right, my dear friend? That's right. 
Well, that was a pretty compelling argument. My only question, how are you keeping the sky around your stand so blue? The city skies are almost always pink. Your foolish physics don't apply to us. Why follow the rules when you can make your own? Agreed. Oh, okay. I've seen enough magic for today, so I guess that's all I need to know. Good answer. Great defies physics. Just incredible. I know. Okay. Now, are you trying our delicious lemonade today or not? Uh, do you want to try it or not? I do. Okay, of course. Uh, is anyone going to pass away? Wait, he's a robot. Can he drink? It's a magic robot. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. He literally breaks the fourth wall of the game and talks to the player directly. I think he can do whatever the hell he wants. <laughs> the robot grins before pouring you a cup. When he sees they seem to be out of ice, he turns to his partner. PK, would you mind? Nope. A sudden flash of light takes you by surprise, and you stare in shock when the small cat seems to have vanished. Yet only seconds later, another burst of light appeared, and the cat was back where he'd been standing. Ice cube and paw. Here you go. Thank you, darling. The robot drops the two it's ice cubes into the drink. It's not very sanitary. I know, whatever. I believe this is yours, Morphus. Per pink is your favorite, after all. How did you do that? And how do you know my name? Oh, that's our little secret for now. But you need to secret time. <laughs> but now you need to get going. The player might get bored, and you already and you haven't even met Jack yet. What? Who's? Shush. The dialogue is really the same in both options. Talk about lazy writing. You couldn't wrap your mind around it, but considering you were talking to a god within your new necklace, it's best not to question these things. Pens and a necklace? Sheesh, he never told us about it. I think it's pretty. Are you reading my mind? Honestly, if I, I'd be offended about this, but my character sprite doesn't really allow me that kind of movement, so I guess I'll forgive him for now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, what, how? No time, get out of here. Come on now. Okay, that's one of the things that does suck. Like, even though I don't want the reboot to ge be a game, I want it to be a video, I might have to keep some of the meta stuff because that's some of my favorite part of the game. Um, that's funny. It's funny, yeah. Like, maybe I'll make it that you're playing a video game and that the meta stuff comes out. And that's when I'll put Reaper's real, like, my, or my real Persona's updated backstory into it because, again, I made this in middle school, so it's very outdated and it's not entirely canon. The events still have an effect on my character's backstory, because can canonly speaking, Rainbot, my persona, did still make the Dolber Quest games. Um, but the events in them that they're describing, like, Reaper and Rain aren't really real people. Like, in the game it looks like they are, they're not. Um, in the lore anymore, I changed it. They're just figments of my imagination, so. Rainbot's meanwhile just sitting in the void watching this go down like, wow, this sucks. I'm depressed. Like, that's what they're doing at this point. Like, anytime you see Rain or Reaper, they're just figments of Rainbot's imagination while they're having a stroke, like, in the middle of a depressive episode in middle school or something. Oh, okay. So, that's the lore of the game, I guess. Let's keep going. Um, have fun. We'll see you in a bit, Morphus. Um, you, you leave. You're in the market now. Uh, this is also a character encounter. Okay. It seems you've been gone longer than you thought because you can't seem to remember this strange blockade in your path before. The front desk is now accompanied by a short wall with a metal gate guarding the entrance. Unsure of what to do, you push on the odd gear-like door, only to huff in frusta frustration when this leads to no success. It's locked? Weird, this used to be a public building. Oh well, I guess I'll just have to climb over it. You decide to approach the issue in a very professional and decent manner. So, of course, the most appropriate action to take is to raise your leg as high as your gears allow, attempting to take a big step over the blockade. And my gods, it looks absolutely <laughs> fabulous. Who needs leg day with an amazing show of power like your own? Thanks, middle school me. Uh, such beauty, such grace, such... Hey, hey, excuse me, sir. Oh, wait, this guy's an accent. Shit. Um, hmm? Please refrain... I suffocated. Sorry. Um... <laughs> Please refrain from climbing over the metal guards. You're supposed to type in your membership number to enter. I'm doing my boy dirty with that voice. <laughs> the strange man seems to have been calling your attention from the front desk, so it's a shock you didn't notice him until this approach. You slowly lower your legs back to the floor, much to your disappointment, and glance back to the front desk out of curiosity. Plenty of papers and office supplies litter the countertop, such as pencils and paper and... and... Oh, wow. Is that really your name? I beg your, I beg your pardon. <laughs> that name tag, it says, ha. Huh. He patiently awaits your reply as you stifle another chuckle. Jack Jackson? Ah, yes, Jackson is my fiance's lovely last name. She's a brilliant professor, especially with robots. 
That's really cool. My mom's a scientist too. Maybe she could meet your fiance sometime. I'd love to see the robots she'd built. Well, considering I'm one of them, I say her robots are quite the sight to behold. Wait, you're a robot? Of course, darling. I was built to be her loving boyfriend, after all. I can't believe we'll be married soon. Although I prefer the term android, considering I have a much more human-like appearance. Truly is a shame knowing how horrible all of humanity is. Humans are just so selfish, cruel, and greedy, and terribly ru rude. They don't care God, about I us- God, I fucking hate humans, man. <laughs> he hates humans. <laughs> they don't care about us machines. They never have, and they never will. Sometimes I just wish I could grab my hideous co-workers by the neck, get a good tight grip, and suffocate their pitiful breathing patterns, and then... <laughs> oh my, oh, pardon me. I seem to have gotten Is carried away okay? for a moment there. Jesus Christ. He's not okay. <laughs> <laughs> but those disgusting humans oh, are nothing like my beloved Cecil. It's as if she's a perfect machine, like me, only born into the wrong race if this advancing technology something something I can't talk. That's why I'm so lucky to be marrying her, the love of my life. Isn't it all just wonderful? Yeah, congratulations. You're getting married to your creator? Or what was that part about your co-workers? <laughs> what do you want to ask? Mika, please. Yeah, congratulations, bro. <laughs> you don't want to ask anything? Don't hurt me. Wait. <laughs> He's not going to hurt you. I'll You're tell getting... you that now. Okay. He's um, too polite. What's... That part about your co-workers, question mark? I'm concerned. Oh, wow, it's spelled wrong. co -walker. Why are there so many spelling errors in this game? I did spell check when I was writing the script. Anyway, did you have any other questions, or... Oh, he just skips over it if you pick that option. Um, <laughs> oh. He's just like, uh, anyway, um... It's Morphus. What a lovely name that is. But as I was saying, is there anything else I can help you with here at the desk, darling? Why do you hate humans so much, or your fiancé must be quite the gal? Um, why do you hate humans so much, bro? Have I not already stated my reasoning? Besides, it must be fairly, fairly obvious to you, my fellow machine. Humans abuse machines like us. They don't care about how we feel, and often doubt that we even feel anything at all. Humanity is just selfish and naive. They don't see the bigger picture and I always bicker over such pointless ideas. But I suppose that can be pushed to the side for now. I'm curious about you, Morphus. What's on your mind at the moment? We could discuss anything ranging from your own love life to the boiling hatred for humanity that we may share. I guess I don't have much of a hatred for humanity. My mom is human, and I like her a lot. I don't really think she understands me all that much, though. Uh, she wants me to be a killing machine. Then let's stick to your love life topic, shall we? Well, I had a boyfriend when I was on my mom's security unit, but that was only for a little while. After the, uh, the accident I had with an old friend, he acted pretty rudely about the whole thing, so I cut off with him after that. His name was Fletcher. He's human, too, but his hands got cut off and replaced with metal ones. I never knew why, because uh -oh. he never wanted to talk about it. No, you haven't seen Fletcher yet in this game, and you're not gonna see him later. This Fletcher was planned for, like, the third game, and then he just never happened, because... Uh, the th instead of making the third game, I made the prequel, so you didn't see Fletcher yet. There are a handful of characters you didn't see yet. Yeah, incredible. I have art of him on my page, though. Like, if you scroll down, you can probably see art of Fletcher. He's the really pale guy with, like, magenta eyes, and then he has, like, the side mohawk, and his hair is, like, magenta green and blue, and he has, like, the checkered coat sometimes. He was originally a design for one of my personas, and I scrapped it to make him a character instead. That guy. Wow. Yay! Dude. Yep. Because he never wanted to talk about. Okay. Anyway, this isn't important. Um. Okay. Blah blah blah. Fletcher went missing like forever ago, and foreshadowing. He'll probably be fine. I guess you're right. Oh, hold on. What? Hold on. What? Can I try and connect? Uh, can I try and connect from my computer again? Yeah, you can go ahead. Because it's really uh, not that good. Yeah, from you can go my ahead. Fucking phone, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm gonna speed run parts of this. Go ahead. It worked. Okay. Good. Okay. Oh, don't play dumb with me, Morphus. With a fashion self like yours, and your and to match your charming persona, I bet you'll find someone new in no time. And whichever guy or gal you end up with will definitely be a lucky one. Thank you, Jack. Right. That's very nice of you. <laughs> Not a problem at all, darling. He says darling a lot, and it's like my favorite thing. 
Now, I believe we've wasted enough of your time with this nonsense. Just enter your membership number into this device and we can send you off to the shop. I don't have a membership. You don't have a membership? No? Then why did you even come to this market? It's it's Ikea. It's Costco, bro. You need a membership. It's the only one in town. I need to loser? finish my... I need to finish my desert without a membership. <laughs> Not Ikea. Um, Costco needs a membership, though. Oh, please spare oh. my soul, wise store clerk. All right, fine, but on one condition. Robot to robot. Anything. You'll have to go out with me tonight. Uh, what? Oh, no, we just established that I'm engaged, Morphus. Right, sorry. I meant that you could meet me in town tonight. Didn't you hear about the carnival reopening? What carnival? You must not get out enough, darling. My friend Vivian is a ringmaster of, with his boyfriend Dexter. It was closed for a while after some switching in staff, but now Vivian is the only one in charge of the whole theme park. So now the entire carnival is run by a robot, practically a living celebration of how far we've come since the failed revolt. Shut the front door. I will not. The door will remain open. Jack Jackson. Hearing it out loud, I'm starting to regret. Hearing it out loud, I'm starting to regret letting people know my full name. <laughs> Never mind that. You're lying. There's no way they'd let an unsupervised robot roam freely enough to run an entire carnival. I'm telling you it's true. I'm telling you it's true. <laughs> Voice acting's hard. The ringmaster was a human named Sophie, and although she was brilliant and beautiful in every show, she couldn't e keep it up long enough to fight off a fatal illness. After the death, her clear her will clearly explained what she wanted, which was for her own vi robot, Vivian, to run the theme park on his own. She wanted him to host the circus shows and learn how to work with the cast of humans and mutants that were left. Considering the carnival was her property, along with Vivian, the other humans uh, and the other performers were already blah blah blah, you couldn't do anything to stop her. Um, so there you have it, no front door shutting at all, a robot owns a circus. Well, it's a lot to take in. You really think someone would be able to summarize that a bit more, so you could go on with your life instead of sitting here just listening to this for so long? What do you mean, what do you think I am, a professionally literate story writer? Where would anyone find one of those? Good point. So, is that a yes to my offer? You aren't quite sure what to say. You just met this guy, and he was offering to take you to a carnival. It sounded pretty suspicious, but something about this just felt right. It was a feeling you couldn't place until a familiar hum from your chest reminded you of your mission. The amulet seems to be reacting to Jack's presence, and it's possible he might be one of the seven you're trying to find. He did have an unusual hatred towards humanity, after all. That could be your lead to his sin. Not wanting to waste any more time, you quickly agree. Sure, it sounds like fun, and I can't wait to see this ringmaster with my own eyes. Wonderful, he's a great guy, really. I can't wait for you to meet him. See you in a few hours? Yep, okay, cool. Moving on. Okay, now you're in the actual market and you can buy stuff. I mean, you can't really, but you're Yay. looking around. Um, looking around. The illusion of choice. The illusion of choice. <laughs> uh, you can, there are different people you can talk to in the uh, market. There are two humans in the engineering aisle that are arguing about something. Or there's a really friendly looking guy in the weapons section, like looking at guns and stuff. I want. I'm gonna force you. We're gonna go to the friendly man in the weapons section. The illusion of choice, because I know who he is, and he's one of my favorites. They're all my favorite character. I love them all equally. Uh, hello. I hope I'm not bothering you, but I have a quick question. The man turns to face you, instantly offering a friendly grin to greet you. Oh my! The only thing bothering me would be if I didn't thank you for having such good manners. My name is Jerome, and I must say I'm truly impressed. Most of you aren't nearly as- most like you aren't nearly as polite. Is that because I'm a robot? What? Heavens no! I just mean your age and people your age are normally moping around or angry. Except our boy, I supposed. My two boys are very different. Jeremy is a shy sweetheart. Jimmy was the guy we mentioned earlier. I was like, is that the reference? Like, no, it's Jimmy. It was the reference earlier. <laughs> Jeremy is a sw just a shy sweetheart that writes such lovely poems, and his big brother is a professional stunt pilot. I'm just so proud of Herc. Wait, I'm so sorry. You were about to say something, weren't you? Actually, yes. Thank you. I was wondering if- by the way, this is Hercules' dad, if you couldn't tell. Um, one of them. Oh. Yeah. Relevant. <laughs> anyway, um, because Hercules is a stunt pilot. Like, he's a f the flaming guy, and he, like, flies around with his jetpack. Um... I was wondering if you'd heard of anything suspicious around here, if you don't mind me asking. Although I don't mind you asking at all, I'm afraid there hasn't been anything strange I've seen. We do live in a city that floats in the sky, after all. There isn't much to be surprised by anymore. Okay, thanks. I'm gonna go finish my shopping. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Go to the exit. You meet another cop. Uh, was everything alright today, Jerome? Um, absolutely, Scotty. I even made a new friend. 
Is that so? That's Hercules' other dad. Um, oh. Wow, a lot of gays here. I like that. Okay, this is because this was my first project I got to include LGBT stuff in, so I went a bit overboard. I was excited. I wanted to be uh, more inclusive. Yeah. <laughs> this was the first time I got to do it. Honestly, that's me with all my projects. Every single one of my characters is gay in one way or another. <laughs> well, no, like, some of the main characters are straight. Uh, the mom... Mom is heterosexual. Decay is heterosexual. I mean, we you don't know him yet, but he comes in later. Um, and then the oh, main yeah. romance of the story, aside Morpheus's romance, yes, he gets a hookup with a very rushed climax, but he meets someone and they fall in love during the game. Um, we aren't at yeah. Morpheus's guy crush yet, though. Um, the Jack and Cecil are the main couple because they're the one you go to the wedding for. They're um, straight. <laughs> That's my excuse for it. Nice. The main ones are straight. <laughs> I don't hate straight people. Like, okay, th that sounded like I hate straight <laughs> people. I like, don't. <laughs> you sound like that vine where it's like, not to be racist or anything, but Asian people are... <laughs> you sound like that. <laughs> not to be heterophobic or anything, but straight people? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I... Oh, God, that really sounds like I hate straight people. It does. Um. <laughs> oh, man, I, I don't hate straight people. <laughs> I'm joking. All right. Um, all right, we're going to keep going. Uh, that's okay. My name is Morpheus. Oh, you must be the artist Copper's always talking about. I think the screen froze. Oh, no, there it goes. Um, oh, you must be the little artist Copper's always talking about. Wait, did you say Copper? I did. Do you know him? He's my older brother. Copper did say he has a lot of siblings. How cute. Sorry, it's just so nice to finally meet you. I've just heard so much about your paintings and your commissions. Jerome. I can't believe this is really you. You really do love pink. Jerome. Oh, it's such a pleasure. Yo, Jerome, shut up. <laughs> huh? The excited Jerome, man please. happily turns to his back towards his husband, smiling cheerfully, most likely oblivious to the volume he, Scott had to reach just to get him to stop his rambling. We need to get back to the station now. My shift's nearly over, and we need to pick up Jeremy from his own practice. You're right. Okay, we're skipping this part. <laughs> Someone just asked what we were doing. Um, we're playing we're Gold playing Quest. Rain's old game that they did, that they made in middle school. Yeah, my um, super old one. Yeah, um, it's fun. It's nice. You should stay. And mm -hmm. we also still take questions. I think. Yeah, we're gonna I'll answer help questions. Answer them as best as I can. I'm kind of speed running through this. I'm sorry. Um, okay, blah blah blah. You woke up at three in the afternoon. How is it already so late? Now it's nighttime. Um, do you want to stop at the lemonade stand or just skip the visit and go home? Oh, uh, I can skip. skip. I don't have a lot of time left. It's really late. You don't so. want to meet the four, fourth wall breaking boys? Okay, skip. No, I do not. I guess just getting home would be faster. You then head home and... Nope, you aren't doing that. What? This is my game, Morpheus. I decide where the player can go. Besides, we're solving oh. some mysteries here. You're going to theorize a bit, ask questions, look through material outside the games for answers, take quizzes. Oh, it's going to be fun. Took you long enough to get back here. And now you're back at the lemonade stand. Hello again. What's going on? Wait, wasn't it just nighttime? Oh, whoops, that's my bad. Let me transition. Let me try that transition again real quick. And they yeet out, and they try it again. There, that's much better, isn't it? Now it's nighttime. The stars look very pretty, Rain. Thank you, I made them myself. Okay, well, not really. My friend Blue did it, but that doesn't matter right now. You think you can skip our scene in this game without a bit of feedback? What are you talking about? We have a job for you. A very important one, too. Alright, what is it? This game's universe is a mess, kid. There's so much history behind it that the player probably barely knows what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> so instead of just dropping hints everywhere, you're actually going to help them learn about it. I'm not going to lie, it's going to be pretty tough. But hey, by passing our tests, you should show that you're worthy of playing my game and learning more about these characters. Again, Rain is just a figment of Rainbot's imagination, but whatever. Um, that's probably why they look similar. It'll still be fun. You want to save the world, don't you? So answer our shitty quiz questions. You need to answer one question. Type it in, blah, blah, blah. Don't worry, you have an unlimited amount of attempts available. Now, here's your first question. Please use all lowercase metals. Letters, I don't need capitals flooding the stream. screen. What is your favorite color, Morpheus? The answer is pink. And you type it in, enter. That is correct. Perfect, fantastic job, the both of you. The both of us. Oh, I want to try a code, too. What is my robot friend's name? Remember, he doesn't like capital letters. 
Rain. That's right again. Fabulous. Absolutely Yay. fantastic. Now you're ready for our test. Stra strap in, kiddo. This game's about to go off the rails. Okay. We still, uh, we're just gonna keep skipping. Skipping. Okay. You're back home. Your mom's there. Morphus, I was worried you wouldn't stop home to check in. I, uh, I mean, sorry. It's been a crazy day. It's all right. I understand. Um, blah, blah. I was just worried. Worried about what? Um, she was worried because you were out all day, and it's like, and she doesn't want you tampering with magic, because the, her husband, aka your dad, Damien, he tampered with a lot of magic, and then he died, so she's really worried that if you're messing with magic, you're gonna end up like him. Oh, okay, um, so rest she's in getting, peace, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, um, she's getting pretty sus, because she doesn't want you messing with magic. She doesn't want you to die like your dad did. So we're going to skip this entire conversation because I literally just summed it up to you. Yes. Okay, um, I promise I'll try to avoid magic. Your mother seems to glance away for a moment as if lost in thought after you reply. Her glasses hide her eyes so you aren't quite sure of what she might be thinking of. After a minute of silence passes, she finally smiles back to you. She never drops the grin, so you never really know what's on her mind, but for now she seems genuine. Oh yeah, she'd be great friends with Alistair because she smiles all the time. It's from my poor stress. insane boy. Yeah, it. She's stressed about it because, well, she lost her husband and now she's responsible for the robots of this entire city by her own by herself. Like it's crazy. Um, I guess that's all I could really hope for for now. Uh, do you want to go watch TV with the others? Actually, I made a new friend. His name is Jack Jackson. Great, right? Jackson. I've heard that name somewhere before. His fiance is an inventor, so maybe that's where you've heard of them. Ah, yes. Now I remember. In that case, I will admit you to ha that you have a good taste in people, Morphus. Having a friend like that will be good for you. Really? Wow, thanks. No problem, Morphus. Now, if you plan on going out to, to town tomorrow, blah, 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 blah. Oh, hey, um, the two guards, your brothers are home. I think that's it. Your brothers are home. Um, and they talk. And you say hi to your sister, too. Oh, my God, when did you get here? Just now. But how? Oh, forget it. I've seen too many weird things today, and you're the last person I'd try to question. Meh, fair enough. What about you two, rough day? Yeah, we had to capture another group of rebel bots, and they were not afraid to get violent. It totally sucked. Sky, watch your language. Considering that you're referring to the vocal form of speech, I can't see or watch it. What do you want me to do, build something to sit down and watch the sound waves look like? God, Copper, you're a huge loser sometimes. Yes. That was very rude. Yeah, you're gonna, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna cut someone with that edgy attitude. Whatever, aside from Sky's world, world record amount of sarcasm, did anything else happen today? I was about to ask you the same thing. Well, I hate to disappoint you, but me and Herc just went to the local bots tavern after the stunt show. His folks were shopping, so it was pretty uneventful. Oh, shoot. Wait, I'm sorry, guys. I really have to get going now. Where are you going this late? Uh, okay, you're going to meet with Jack now. So we're skipping all of this. It's just sibling dialogue, pretty much, where Sky's being a jerk. <laughs> oh, no. Why did okay. you make her so mean? Or, or them? Wait. Sky is all pink, but he's a guy. Okay, good. Yeah. The nurse Why robots are all like pastel so pink and stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, Morpheus, are you sure. there? You talk to the god. That's it. You talk to him. You say hi. Hello? Go straight to the carnival or stop by the lemonade stand first. We're just gonna go straight to the carnival. Yeah, I should stop wasting time anyway. Wait! Huh? Don't you want to get some hints from us? We have plenty to share with you. Do you want to get hints from them at the lemonade stand, or do you just want to keep speed running it? We can keep speed running it. Okay. Just no, I need introducing to... all the characters. No, I need to go. But are you really sure? Yes, I'm leaving now. Heh. <laughs> all right, let me put it this way. Are you coming with me for some advice, Morphus? And then there's only one option, and it says, yes, of course I need your help, Rain. Yes, perfect. Now you can come with me and we'll... Actually, no, I shouldn't force it. You're here because you chose to be, and that's honestly good enough for me now. Still, maybe you could stop by the stand sometime? Pretty soon you'll have to anyway. Might as well get into the routine a bit early. I'd hate for us to be lonely without you around. But for now, I'll just leave you be. Okay, now we can go to the thing. We had to, like, swat him away. <laughs> it's like kicking a puppy. God. Okay, are there any questions we should answer before we go through this part of the game? Because you're going to meet more characters here. Um, I don't think I see any questions. Uh, no. 
I don't think so. Okay. I, I guess if anyone has a question, you can ask now. Yeah, and during this part of the scene, and during this scene, we'll answer questions like after the scene. Okay. The carnival. This is been, this is gonna be like a two and a half hour stream because we're gonna get through more of this game and then we're gonna vaguely check out the other two. Like not nearly as much detail. Just kind of look them over. Um. Yes. Okay. The carnival is absolutely beautiful. Everything is insanely colorful and the lights hung to the. Okay, whatever. It's cool. Um. The amulet buzzes when they approach you. We've been looking. Oh, I love Vivian. He's one of my favorites. Vivian low key inspired sick, but also not at the same time because Vivian uh -huh. was a lot different. Um, I don't know. His voice did though, cause he has the sick voice like this. He was the first character to have that voice. Um, we've been looking everywhere for you, darling. Hi, Jack. Sorry I'm late. Things just got a bit hectic back at my place. No worries, not at all. And Morpheus, this is my dear friend Vivian. The smaller robot is only about four feet tall, so you have to look down to meet his colorful eyes. You aren't exactly tall, but you're still over five feet, so he's quite small. Hello, nice to meet you, Morpheus. I've heard all about you from Jack. Are you really an artist? It's nice to meet you too, Vivian, but how did you know I'm an artist? I could see you piling up art supplies and paint in your shopping bag from a mile away at the front desk. It wasn't hard to make a guess. Oh, yeah. Before you can continue the conversation, a taller man rushes over to the energetic ringmaster. He seems to be human, but there's a television stuck on his head, where a set of concerned eyes were displayed. He has a clipboard. Um, okay, this is my boy. This is Oliver. He is one of my first OCs ever. Like, I know I say that about a lot of these characters, but Oliver was, like, one of my first. Like, he was in a ton of my stories back when I was in middle school. Like, I literally was him for Halloween. Like, I made his Halloween... You can probably find that picture on my Instagram where I made his head, like the TV head out of a box, and I went around dressed as him. Oliver oh, also dude. inspired the character, so cool. um, what's his name? Uh, Henry, Henry, in the My, Li My Little Pony containment records, the Halloween special that's coming out, like, on the 31st of this month. Um, unless there's a delay, but hopefully we're aiming for the 31st. The character with the TV on his head in that, um, he's inspired entirely from Oliver. They're really similar character-wise. Pardon me, sir, but Cedric would, li wanted, would like to know if the kids can share a tent. There isn't enough room for the circus supply. Okay, whatever. This is important. Of course, Oliver. Toby and Jester are great friends. I'm sure they wouldn't mind. Toby, I did point out earlier, he's the stuffed animal guy, and Jester is kind of like the ghost one that hangs out with him. They're friends. They party. All right. Thank you. I just had to get a cameo in there for my stupid OCs. Um, he's nice. Oliver keeps every... Oliver keeps everything... I forgot to do the voice. Fuck. <laughs> Oliver keeps everything in order around here when I'm busy. He and his friend, he and his family have been with me since I started this ca carnival and helped raise Sophie too. But that was, uh, that was a long time ago. Jack seems to notice the smaller robot's discomfort and your amulet begins to buzz and whir when the ringmaster glanced away nervously. Anyway, Morpheus has a rather interesting family life as well. Oh, uh, yeah, they're the reason I almost didn't make it here. Well, we're glad you could make it. I always love making new friends. The ringmaster recovers shockingly quickly from his anxious state, grinning up at you widely. It's almost unsettling, and for a short moment, you swore you could see a glint of red in his glowing eyes. But as soon as you spot it, the ruby color vanishes, and the amulet stops buzzing with a sudden spark. This worries you, of course, but you, can take, you can't take Penn's locket out around the other bots. Is there anything you'd like to do before we head to Vivian's tent? Well, you actually did have a few options. You were especially concerned with why Vivian's eyes appeared red, but both of the other machines seem to be ignoring that. Okay, there are three options now. Why did your eyes look red, Vivian? I'd like to meet at the I'd like to meet the cast of your circus. Nope, let's get going. These are all pretty short, so you can pick one. Um, I'd like to meet the cast of your circus. I want to see them. Come on. Okay, you want to see the, the clowns? Okay. There actually are clowns. Wonderful, they'll be yes. happy to meet you. Uh, you do have a very charming personality, after all. We have a bit of time before everything else shuts down for the night. Not for me, though. I run on kinetic energy. So is there anyone in particular you'd like to meet? To meet? They all should be somewhere around to here meet. by now. <laughs> I'm just going to say, are there any clowns? Because I'm assuming that's what you want. Yes. We have four yes. of them, actually. Yes. I'll point them out as we walk by. They're probably very busy. As you near the carnival center, a group of four colorful clowns catches your eye. Vivian cheerfully four. smiles and points towards them as you pass. Oh, uh, there's, like, my really crappy art of them. It's so overly shaded, you can hardly see 
diamond's face because it's all weird and blurry. Um, it's really cute, though. I like them. Um, red is spades, blue is diamonds, purple is clubs, and wait, where is he? Um, these three are some of my really old OCs, too. I never posted about them, but I did post about hearts, which is the main one. I have, if I do a reboot of Dover Quest, I'll probably actually do a separate thing for hearts. Like, I'll probably do a separate short for Allison's story, too, because Allison's story is really good. And Hearts has a story. It's just smaller and simpler, so he's a side character. But I really like Hearts. Like, if you go on my Instagram, you can see I used to draw Hearts for a lot of, like, clown art I was in. But that, I even tried to join a community of, like, clowns. Like a, like a little mini fan base server thing. But they were all jerks. So, um, yeah. That didn't work out. Because they were the kind of people that literally held a quote-unquote court trial when I did something wrong and they like made everyone gather out. I was like, what is happening? Like I'm, I'm a kid. I'm in middle school. I'm I just want to draw clowns. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like anyway, that's a story I'm for another so time. Sorry. That this, all this of that. Hell. Oh no. Yeah. Lots of trauma in the big boy bag. Hold on. I'm okay. Talk about things. Answer questions. Yes. Okay. Oh, uh, hell yeah. Okay, so I've seen a few questions. Um, okay, Lisa Star asked, I have a question, but where can I play this game? It looks pretty interesting. I'm not sure if um, Rain has... Oh, no. Uh, you can play it on... I think you can get it on a website. Oh, yeah, um, you can get this on Game Jolt. You can get all three games on Game yeah. Jolt. On, like, um, desktop big boy computers. Yes, you should probably, like, link the website, because I've seen a few people say they want to play it. Oh, yeah, I can link that. You guys are not yeah, allowed to, I'm... like, attack me or make fun of me, though, please. I'm baby. Please don't. I'm not going to try and pronounce... Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Mika. I'm sorry in advance for making your sonar look like a DreamWorks troll. I That's love Malibu. that, actually. <laughs> and I've seen your art, and they look very good in your style. Thank you so much, like... I'm so excited Dad's for the analysis guy. videos. <laughs> yes, same. It's going to be, like, awesome. I'm going to start editing the first video, like, at the end of the week, if we can get all the sprite art done. I have to talk to Malibu about that later, when I'm not half asleep. Anyway, back to yes. this. Uh, yeah, when the two of the clowns There's begin one to... more question give, that give I don't understand, question. though. What is the question? Um, I would like a pen of your OCs, dot, 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 to buy, dot, dot, There's dot, a red bubble. where, when... I have a red bubble. I don't use it anymore because no one really bought anything from it. I originally had it because I was trying to get medicine for my one bird, Eva, who was sick. Um, I named it after you you know who you can probably guess. But um, And then Felix was fine. He was my other bird. But um, Eva got very sick, and it got to the point where we couldn't keep affording her medicine. I tried to sell stuff on Redbubble, but it didn't work. And eventually we just had to give Eva up to another family along with Felix, so that's how I lost my two birds. I wound up getting Kirby oh. instead because he was a pet I could take care of, but the birds, like, she got really sick. We couldn't keep take, take care of her. So That's very unfortunate. It's I'm fine, sorry it's for fine. That. The trauma bag! Only nineteen ninety nine Okay, um the, <laughs> No Yeah, but whatever. Um You can play the game on Game Joel. If you just search Dover Quest, you'll find my old middle school website, which I'm gonna update later this weekend, and also I'll post about the website when I update it. Um, and you can also find the games on Game Jolt. Um, yeah. So, the, yeah, and it, I have a red bubble. You can just probably Google it and find it. I have some old stuff with a few of the Dover Quest characters there. I think maybe one or two Darling Demons things, but it's old and I don't use it anymore. I need to, up if I updated it with Urkin Outcast stuff, I don't think people would buy it, but I could still do it maybe later when I'm not packed with project work. Anyway, back to this. Um, okay, a pink, the pink clown seems to be hiding behind clubs, most of his body replaced with metal limbs, which clicked in whirl, word as he adjusted his clawed-like hands timidly. There he is, and that's hearts. Perfect, now we can get to my tent. Who is this? Very good. Yeah. My boy! Okay, this was obviously the inspiration for Sick and Mux, like, personality-wise. Like, um, these two are dating, so it's not the father-son dynamic, but it's, like, the really energetic tiny one with the big scary one. Like, you can tell. You can tell it was the inspiration. Again, these yes. characters mean a lot to me. They were my first OCs, so, of course, I take a lot of inspiration from them. Um. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah. The hearts, the last clown there, hearts, the pink one, 
you can literally go on my Instagram, scroll down a bit, and you'll probably find his full reference sheet. I love hearts. He was one of my big boy OCs. Anyway, um, mm -mm. hi, Dexy. This is Morphus. It's nice to meet you, Dexy. The giant machine suddenly gives you a cold look as you address him. His eyes glow softly as he towers over you and Jack, yet the android next to you seems unfazed. His name is Dexter, darling. We should really be calling him that. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. It's, a it's all right. I was about to say, that's much too enthusiastic of a voice for Dexter. What are you guys up to? If you want, if you're more than welcome to join us. The large machine shifts his gaze down to Vivian, and it knows noticeably... English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Okay. And it noticeably oh, softens not. from... <laughs> and it'll, the large machine... We're going to start over because I'm dyslexic. I'm sorry for everyone watching this. The large machine shifts his gaze down to Vivian, and it noticeably softens from the cold, frightening gaze he offered you in Jack, shifting into a gentle, soft look that focused on the small ringmaster. I'm off to head into my own tent. Uh, read in my own tent. Unless you were in need of my assistance, I would prefer to rest there for the evening. Oh, that's okay. Have fun reading. I assure you that I will. Dexter is the carnival's magician. I'm too tired to do character voices. He's super smart and really strong, too. He's also Vivian's favorite pillow whenever he finally tends to lay down to relax for charge. Hey, Dexy's cloak is soft and he doesn't mind me carrying and he doesn't mind carrying me around whenever I need to rest my feet. That's and cute. He, it is really cute. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we weren't supposed to be getting weren't we supposed uh, go to the tent. I'm too tired to read. Uh, wow, this is very chaotic. Forget what you said about your room earlier. Uh, this is a war zone. An apocalyptic <laughs> wasteland of color with bright, twinkly lights shooting down from... Okay, I'm too lazy to read this. Skipping, skipping, skipping. They're talking about, let's I do like, a game, let's do something fun. I like fun. the two little kitties in the background. Oh yeah, they're, they're it's really a stuffed cute. animal of Dexter and Vivian as cats. Oh. Okay. Babies. <laughs> okay, oh, judging by the terrifying description Jack is giving here, like, oh, the, like as if this is a horror game. They're talking about, there's a monster that's been rumored to be around the town, and they're asking Morphus, like, do you want to come play a fun game with us? A.K.A. let's go to the junkyard, the metal junkyard that this monster's in, and let's go find it. Uh, and Morphus is like, that's a shit idea. I'm in, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> so they're going to go hunt this monster down. Um, and then they bring up Sophie by mistake, I think, and it makes Vivian upset, but whatever. Um... Mm -hmm. Sophie was like his mom, essentially, the human lady that owned the the carnival. Okay, now we're in the scrapyard. Um, I'm speed running to get to the character stuff. If you want to play the game, do it yourself. <laughs> the city's purple sky. Okay, it's purple. Um, you're honestly pretty surprised. For a creepy monster-infested death zone, it was actually kind of pretty here. Well, here we are. Really? This is it? It doesn't give me that spooky monster vibe all that much. How would you know what that vibe is like? Maybe mo This is back before vibe was like a meme word. <laughs> How would you know what that vibe is like? Maybe monsters like prefer floral print and scented candles. No need to be biased to the stereotype. Shame on you, good sir. Vivian fakes a gasp of offense, holding a hand to his chest as he may faint. Oh my, how dare you call me sir? I sexually identify as a cat. Thank you for Thank you, middle school me, for that line. <laughs> Thank you, middle school me, for that line. That aged like... Milk. That aged like fine wine. <laughs> Perfect. It's ironic now, considering my pronoun situation, but... Eh, maybe it was foreshadowing for me. And I'm not a cat, but... Non-binary gang, rise up. Anyway, I might get in trouble for saying oh. that, but I don't care. Um, I'm not seeing any monsters around here, and splitting up in a place this big could take all night. How about we split up and meet back in here in half an hour if we can't find it? Sounds good to me. All right, I'll head north towards the gate to find the monster. As you part from the group, you can hear Vivian salute to Jack before bounding in the east direction, as Jack continues to look west. You had, you entered at the th southern ga gate, ah, so there isn't anything back there that you saw. Although the sky looked absolutely stunning, the broken machinery littering the ground was actually quite disturbing. Various gro broken and beaten body parts could be seen laying around the piles of scrap. It was clear they put most of the city's demolished robots here, and even gazing over the now lifeless parts were was disturbing enough for your stomach to twist. 
This place is really, this place really is abandoned. The inside is even more worn out than I thought. I can't imagine what it must have been like working in a place like this. That was probably hard with how big everything is. You freeze in your tracks and your breathing nearly stops. Only a few yards away from where you stand, on top of the mounds of metal, something is staring at you. Your vision seems to blur in cloud when you meet the figure's unblinking stare, making everything blurry and static began to fill your ears as sensory systems are flooded with fear. Two violet eyes stand against the dark figure watching you, unmoving as its needle-like eyes take in your appearance. From the eyes' sickly bright light, you can make out the sight of something crimson covering the monster's joints and fingers, and the beast shifts slowly to take a step closer to you. The dark figure has already taken a step closer, and you have to act fast. What do you do? You try to yell for help, bribe him to leave you alone, or attack the monster. What do you want to do, Mika? Um, fuck shit up. Attack the monster. Attack the monster? Yes. Let's go, boys! Um. Without any reasonable options left, you simply lunge at the dark figure. You've had a great amount of combat experience, so this shouldn't be too bad. The monster's eyes widen in surprise moments before you run into him, knocking the both of you down the metal hill. You both violently tumble down the mound, and you manage to get a good hit to the figure's chest before you both crash to the bottom of the larger hill. When you see that the shadow was taken aback by this sudden event, you don't hesitate to get a rough hold on its neck, tightening your grip dangerously as you shake the figure. <laughs> Who are you, and why are you stalking me? You expect an angry snarl, or at least some sort of inhuman growl in response, but all you hear is silence. You stop shaking the larger figure when you can't hear its reply, only to be met with the strangled sounds of choking and pained wheezing. <laughs> Frowning slightly, you brighten your eyes to get a better look, discovering that this monster is just a robot like you, struggling against your tight grip as he gags dizzily. Please let go, I can't breathe. <laughs> I love him. Realizing that the robot is clearly harmless, you instantly release him, scooting back in surprise when the bigger machine gasps for air, coughing his circuits out as he shakily rubs his neck in pain. <laughs> Look what you did. You hurt him. What do you have to say to yourself, Mika? Mika, I said, what do you have to say to yourself? Are you dead again? Mika... Mika, no! Mika. Okay, Mika died. Um, anyway, we're here now. Um, oh, there's, there you go. Um, Mika, are you back? Okay, Mika's having problems again. I'm just gonna keep going. Um, god, this art gives me, like, PTSD. I used to be best friends with the person who drew this. Now I'm pretty sure I'll never get to talk to them again. Um, Again, that kind of sh another thing that shows how much stuff changes over a few years. This was like, the game actually came out in my freshman year, like, even though I made it in middle school. Um, so I guess that just goes to show how much stuff changes, whether for the better or for worse. I kind of want to go back in time and change the way that went sometimes. There are a lot of things I would take back and undo, and I'm not just talking about the Googling reference poses for the, the pony art in this game. Um, I'm here, by the way. Oh, hi! There you are. Sorry, I got off topic. Um, uh, yeah. It's been a while since I've looked at this frame. Um, yeah. What was your topic? Please tell me. I still miss her a lot. She probably doesn't even remember my name. I'm blocked, though, so I can't really... Oh. Okay, anyway. I, you know, I'm getting off topic. PTSD. Anyway, moving on. Um, back to the game! Back to the game! Fun times. Um... Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. The robot you've just beaten up is too shaken to reply, only managing a terrified wheeze as he looks away, cringing in pain quietly. Uh, you, it's like a Tina Belcher noise, like... Uh. Mm. You also <laughs> noticed that the red substance you'd seen earlier appeared to be rust, and it was painfully lodged in between the robot's joints, making him move much slower and with a bit of a struggle, too. Oh no, no, it's okay, I can help. Are you Okay. Yeah, you poor thing, you're covered in rust. No wonder you fell over so easily. Moving your joints must be draining. Buddy, it's okay, really. I was just scared at first. That's all. Do you need any help? The robot stammers when he attempts to speak in response, clearly struggling with his voice's timid stutter. I, uh... It's okay, take your time. You offer the upset machine a smile, but he still looks down to where... He looks down where he lays to avoid eye contact. Y yes, I... 
do need help. This character inspired Norman, if you couldn't tell. tell. Um, the, like, nervous robot thing. Like, I re Einer was one another one of my favorites. Take a while. Oh, yeah, of course. All of them are my favorite. I really like Einer, though. Um, robots aren't the best, honestly. I love these robots, but, yeah. Uh, Corey literally made fun of me about it. Um, Norman from Urban <laughs> Outcasts, his inspiration was all the way back from Dolberquest, Einer, like the nervous robot thing. They even kind of stand and sound and act the same, and I'm like, yeah, that's fair. Um, all right, what's your name? It's Einer. Sorry, that's a bad name. It's actually a pretty neat name in your opinion, but before you can tell him that, the sound of someone rushing closer cuts you off. Die, fiend! No, Vivian, please don't do that. You cringe oh. when Vivian tackles Einer, nearly giving the shy robot a heart attack when the ringmaster swipes at him violently, struggling to get a cut in. You can see Jack jogging over with worry as well, and you struggle to pry Vivian off of Einer. <laughs> Vivian, stop it, you're scaring him. Scaring him? Isn't he the monster in this place? He could kill us! Einer is not a monster. Whatever those kids saw couldn't have been hit Einer. He's a bit too... Well... Timid for anything brash and cruel like that. Vivian finally stops attempting to scratch across Einer's face, frowning worriedly. Really? Gosh, I'm sorry, Einer. I didn't want anyone to hurt my friend, that's all. Huh. The terrified robot lets out another whine of fear, cowering away from the handshake and how very concerned Vivian had offered. I think you scared him a bit too much, Viv. Oh dear, will he be all right? I just give him a moment. You hesitate before gently rub rubbing the trembling machine's back, attempting to ease his panic. After a minute or two, you were delightfully surprised to see this succeed as Einer nervously looked back to you as he calmed down a bit. Einer, you back with us, bud? Yeah. Good. Einer, these are my friends, Vivian and Jack. They're robots just like us. Hi. I'm really sorry I tried to murder you. I didn't say... <laughs> I apologize as well, considering I'd brought my knife along with intentions of stabbing you. What? Oh. What? Anyway, That's not you're pretty... very nice. <laughs> Jack is has problems, okay. He sure does. I can tell. <laughs> oh yeah. Um what's what are we at? We're at like two hours and sixty minutes. We're gonna stop before we get to three hours, obviously. So let's just go through a bit more of this and do some character stuff. Maybe some of the major scenes. Yes, yes. Take a peek at the other games. Okay, blah blah blah. This is a really cute character interaction, but I'm gonna speak it. Blah blah blah. Jack's fiance, Cecil, is going to Oh, God, it's these dicks again. Um, <laughs> yeah, you get stopped on the bridge again by rain, by the way. That's where I am now. Um, about to get stopped. Uh, Cecil is a mechanic. That's Jack's fiance, who he's marrying, like, in a few days. Um, so, you are... The, that's you're the going, science lady, right? The, you haven't seen her yet. It's not your mom. It's Jack's wife. Yeah, the other science lady. The other lady. science lady, yes. Thank you. Um, Very well. And now you're getting stopped on the bridge by rain. Um, you've been having it easy for quite a while now, kid. Do you really think we'd let you stroll through the game like this? Oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hi again. Didn't you read the description of this game? Once you near the halfway point, things are gonna get tough. I didn't even realize we were at the halfway point. <laughs> I thought it was oh. longer. I mean, we are speed running it. Like, okay. We're just gonna skip all this dialogue. Um, I prefer the game being easy. Ha, well, no matter which answer you gave me, we're still starting the first quiz now. <laughs> Easy question. You just met Einer, an incredibly timid bot that lives in an abandoned junkyard. Why was that place abandoned to begin with? The shutdown was caused Horses. by an incident in the junkyard. What was the name of the man that caused this accident? I, uh... Oh, sorry, you don't know the answer yet. Here, take this wink, <laughs> this link, dolverquest.com. It should help. There is the website. Yeah, that's why, where you'll be doing most of our investigations, so don't lose track of it. Now look around that site until you find gear shift. Investigate the historical article and then answer my question. What is the name of the man who caused the incident? Um, I actually don't remember, so I have to go check. Um, I'm going to move the game. Oh, hi. Um, website. Lemonade stand. i got to go to gear shift. The train station. We believe the one responsible for crashing the train must go by the title Damien. Okay, it was Damien. I mentioned him earlier, I think. Is it Damien? That's incorrect. I spelled it wrong. Hey! <laughs> I spelled it wrong and I got it right. Perfection. Yay! Okay. 
Your eyes are glowing. It's weird. Uh, skipping, 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 skipping. I don't know if that was important or not. I just skipped it though. Um, are you done mon mon Are you done monologuing yet? Uh, yes, my bad. <laughs> Finally, I was getting bored. Well, if you were bored, the player must be dead. Anyway, read through Carmen and see if you can answer this question. We don't want to wear you out too early. Now, what was the number in the home stories protagonist lives in? Going back, Carmen. That was this one. The number of the house. 118. I'm speed running this. Go faster. I'm going Go faster. On. I believe in you. We're not girl. reading any of this. We're it, going girl. fast. Oh, wait. I just skipped it. What was the question? What is two plus two? Oh, you poor. Fine. Four. <laughs> oh, my God. You did it. You've answered the forbidden question. Whoa. No, I'm just kidding. We both know that. I'm just messing with you. We passed your first test. Okay. I really like that part of the gameplay where you have to, like, read the lore and stuff to get stuff. Okay. Uh, oh, they left, but then Rain came back. Um, I wouldn't be doing a very good job as a teacher if I didn't end our session with some advice. You were the kid that killed the mutant in your past life, right? Yeah? Hmm, I see. Then maybe you should question the mutant you killed back then. He might be one of the seven you're looking for. After all, that death was pretty close to the junkyard. Wonder why. Wait, are you saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm just helping my favorite student a bit. Bye-bye, kid. Rain is cute and fun. I like them. Um. Yeah, they're very good. Rain is... Is Rain one of your favorite characters? I'm, t I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the, the thing in the game. Yes, indeed. You are my favorite character. Okay, no. <laughs> I'm the Rain best. Rain is good. I like, I like them. They're a good character. Okay. Epic. Um, very enthusiastic. Okay. Basically, the they the lemonade stand people stopped time, and everyone was kind of frozen in place while you were talking to the lemonade stand people. Now time's resumed. Um, is there anything is, you gotta talk to Vivian? What got you interested? Okay, we're just gonna skip this part. Um, this is the part about Sophie, I think. Um, yeah. Okay, like a hobby or so okay. Wait. Um. Yeah, maybe we can do something for fun after you're all fixed up. Now they're talking to Einar because they're going to take him to Cecil to get repaired. Fun? You know, like a hobby. Something you like to do? How, how about any of that, bud? I, um, I like walking. Fair enough, darling. What a Remember good hobby. <laughs> what a great hobby. <laughs> Remembering yes. what Rain had told you about your test, you quickly cut the conversation, eager for answers. Oh, and before I forget, um, how did you end up in the scrapyard, Einar? Oh, um, my owner wasn't very nice. He said I was defective because I couldn't move as quickly as the other droids, and he planned on shutting me down. If I didn't run away, I'd have been a goner. That's awful! But, uh, do you remember anything else? Maybe Fuck something that like, Something before that, like a violent death or maybe an asylum? Einar looks at you with an expression of shock and concern, only remaining silent when Jack spoke up. But you definitely caught a bit of recognition in his eyes when you asked. Maybe you can get to talk to him more later in private. Let me repeat that phrase. In private. <laughs> if you can't tell, um, Einar is the one who becomes Morpheus' boyfriend later. And they're so oh. cute. I love them. Um, okay, I agree. This is one of the many reasons I hate humanity. No matter what they get, all they do is complain and make life harder for us bots. Never satisfied. If they like to complain so much, why not give them something to, something to complain about? That way they Jack, don't have to groan about finding issues. something. Wouldn't that make the humans happier? Like, another uprising, perhaps? Yeah, I suppose that would keep them complaining for a while. Oh, oh! That's a brilliant idea, Jack! It came from a brilliant mind, after all. But Jack, you know rebel bots can get in a lot of trouble. I could risk the safety of my friends at the carnival. Nobody is uprising against anything. I already have two giant quests to worry about and to watch over my... And to watch my best friend die because they started a revolution. Uh, oh yeah, that's Boss. Boss is the one who like started the original revolution, and he got, he got yeeted. He died. Um, it all sounds scary to me. Ah, oh, come on, Morpheus. Are you sure? I just realized how tall Einer is. How tall is Einer? Let me check the website. While we're here, um, characters. I'm gonna remove this tab soon, so while it's still here, I'm gonna check. Robots. <laughs> city robots. Secret information. Um, Einer. Seven foot one. Holy shit. <laughs> That's a big man. What? 
He's a gentle giant. I'm pretty sure Dexter is only slightly shorter than Einar. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, come on, Morbus. Are you sure you don't want to reconsider the... Okay, we're going to skip this part. No rebelling allowed. Well, you aren't wrong. We could easily be shut down. It's good to have a voice of reason among us. Okay, we're skipping. Um, Skipping. We're in Jack's house now. Yay! Oh, and there's Cecil nice. with her cute orange hair. Um... Jack, where have you been? This is way later than you normally get home. And you brought, um, She's guests? She's adorable. She takes the other three of you with a blink of surprise. Einar lowering his stance with a whimper as Vivian cracks a wide smile. You offer a slight wave, noticing Cecil looks exactly like the woman in the picture you'd guessed her to be. She looks exactly like the picture. Hey, what gives? Sorry, we got lazy. <laughs> That's because when we were doing background art, I think we just put random pictures of my art into the thing. Okay, um, the sudden magical machines appear- I'm gonna almost be done soon. I'm gonna try to speedrun this, because I keep getting scared that someone's gonna break into my room when I'm in the middle of this. Um, oh. okay, I'm- they flirt. They're cute. Cecil's kind of like a tomboy punk type. She's really spunky and fun. Jack is like- Literally rarity for My Little Pony. He's fancy. He says darling a lot. <laughs> Polite. It's cool. Okay, they're going to fix Einar. Um, you, we're gonna stay with Vivian instead of... Huh, nice choice. Nice. Um, we're gonna stay with Vivian because he's gonna tell us things. Shut can up I already. Can I make a joke for a second? Yeah? She was a punk. She killed rarity. Can I make it any more obvious? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You're giving me a stroke. Okay, I'm we're gonna so I don't have a stroke. Do not have a stroke. We're gonna have a stroke. We're gonna speed run as much of this as possible to meet the other members of the seven sins, whatever the hell this is, and then yes. um we're gonna peek at the other games, see what it's like. Um yeah. Okay, we're gonna do this scene and then we're gonna speed run it. Um Vivian eyes you worriedly after your sudden outburst, considering you just seem to have yelled at yourself. You okay? Oh, I'm sorry, Vivian. Yes, I'm fine. That's good. I got worried there for a second. So what's it like being the ringmaster? Bring up any, uh... Penn's amulet hums softly as you try thinking of what to say. Vivian raising a brow in confusion once you've finally gathered your thoughts. Any stressful events? Anything that makes you feel bad? Not much. It's just the paperwork, that's all. The ringmaster shifts in discomfort, clearly not wanting to discuss something like this. What about the red I saw in your eyes earlier today, or are you sure you're okay? Which one do you want to go with? Um, which one, dude? Uh, the first one, the first one, the first one sounds good. I'm Speed thinking, run. Okay. okay, what about the red I saw in your eyes earlier today? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come on, Vivian. Yeah, I know you have something to do with this. Just tell me what happened to you. Vivian's eyes widen, and he stares up at you in fearful confusion. Shoot, Vivian, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to say it like that. It's you, isn't it? Who? You're the one that killed that mutant kid. What? How do you know about that? You shouldn't have any memory of my past life, let alone yours. You're right, and the others don't remember a thing. I made sure I'd remember, though, and I'm not letting you screw us all over again. I don't think I meant to. No, I don't want to hear it. You don't have that old amulet, don't you? The small robot's eyes filled with a dark red, glowing against an inky black that dimmed his usually bright eyes. Well, guess what? That won't matter. It doesn't make a difference. You don't have enough time left, Morphus. You don't even deserve to wear that awful trinket. It belonged to me. Please, Vivian, I know you're probably scared, but I promised Penn I'd help him save everyone. That includes you, and I need you to redeem your spirit. Why in the world would I do that for you? You're the one who doomed the entire world. And why? And you want me to trust you? And Why? You got a magic necklace? No, that won't do it for me. If you really want to save everyone, you'll have to work for it. You know next to nothing about the world you plan on saving. Nothing outside of what you've learned from home. I can sense it from your aura. I bet you've only taken one of the gods' tests. But wait, the gods are all gone now. In that case, I honestly don't know where you'd take the trials and testing. Only gods can give it, and everyone knows they were all banished across the land. Locations unknown. I am taking the tests. I just took my first today. And guess what? I passed it. <laughs> Please think about it. I'll need your redemption no matter what. You really don't mind helping me speed this along a bit? Of course not. 
I want you to work as hard as I did. You will learn about our world and understand my pain. And only after you've proven yourself to the other five will I give you my spirit in return. If you can't tell, it's Allison. Oh. I'm, like, sitting here. I'm, like, I'm waiting for, like, the pieces to go together. I'm, like, it's it's Allison. The red eyes. The He was the original amulet holder. And then after Morpheus as a... Morpheus in his past life, he was some kid named Charlie, I think. Um, and he was the one, the first one to get possessed by the Elder God, and he started killing people. So he's the reason that they lost the first game, essentially. Uh, okay. So he screwed oh, Allison Jesus. over. Go ahead. Huh? Oh, sorry, I thought you were saying something. Oh, I said, oh, Jesus. Um, there's a lot of characters. We're not done yet. <laughs> there are more yeah, characters. I know, I know. There are more. So many more. Okay. Listen, I don't know what happened. Okay, we're gonna skip the rest of this. You get the gist. Um, he goes back to normal. Ignores that this ever happened. Einer's chill. There's a lot of dialogue we're skipping. Oh, <laughs> they're flirt. <coughs> <coughs> they're flirting. <laughs> we're gonna skip. <coughs> they're flirting. Are you okay. We're gonna skip it. <laughs> We're gonna skip it. Skip the flirting. We don't want any of that. We don't want any of that. No flirting on my Christian live stream. Very um, good. It's a lot of jokes and flirting. Then they get home. Hey! There's the whole family together right there. Look at them all partying. They're all so cute. You see Sky in the background. There's Copper, Bella, Morpheus, Mom, aka Lydia. Look at them hanging out. Your I'm designs looking. are so pleasing to look at. Like, there's, there's, I love them. There's just, like, so much. These are some like, of my oldest designs, too. I love them, dude. Your, I love your designs in general. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Your art, okay, your art is very simplified and very effective in what it does, and I like that so much. And Being simple? Like, hmm? I'm effective in being a simp? <laughs> I don't know that. Um, your 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 art is very effective in like showing character traits. Uh, it's very like expressive in a like nice cartoony way. It's very pleasing to look at. There's no like clashing colors or anything. And your designs, even though there's um sometimes there's like a lot of detail, it still fits very well with the art style. And it doesn't look cluttered, and I love that. Like, your art is so nice. Bro, you're making me blush. You're making Aww. me blush. <laughs> Character design is one of the things I take pride in, so I'm, like, super embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Some of these old characters don't have the best designs, but some of them I'm still really proud of, like Sky and Copper. Even though they're, like, literally Transformers OCs, they're cool. They look very cool. Thank they you. do look very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, but... <clears throat> Uh, you, what I skipped over is they were watching TV as a family, and the news reporter was talking about something that, like, a robot rebelled and went haywire and blew up a building. I don't remember which one. It was about Adam. Adam was the robot that exploded everything. He's, like, a space ranger robot that was meant to go to, like, find another planet for them to get life on because the floating island only is gonna last so long, but that backfired because the robot went, quote-unquote, rogue and ran away. Um... And then also, he is the Adam is the one who r ran away with Xavier, the mute kid that inspired Rio. Um, I love Xavier so much. He's a cool character. I tried to make yes. my name Xavier for a while because I thought it was such a cool name, but I just didn't. Um, uh, whatever. Um, ahem. The then on the news report, I'm pretty sure they also go over the train station thing you were investigating earlier. Remember that it was important. Um, yes. There was a rebel robot that caused the train station accident, and his name was Timmy. Um, he was the conductor. You meet him later in this game, I forgot. Um, and then there was another rogue robot that was, like, the prototype of what your sister Bella was going to be, and that was Cindy. We'll meet the rogue robots later. Um, but there was a news report on him, so I'm just briefly summarizing. Mm, okay. Um, now your mom's ta talking about your dad No. Your father was the man I'd known long ago, but after he became too ambitious with his study of magic, he vanished without a trace. That sucks. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
Well, a while after he disappeared, some people around the town began to call him Decay, as an ur urban legend of some kind. That crazy guy that haunts the town. It honestly insults me more than anything else, but to hear that name again. It almost makes me feel like he's still out there. Is he? Oh, no, of course not. He's been long gone for years, Morphus. Nothing will change that. Now, you should go up and get to bed if you plan on starting your day with your friends tomorrow, which I do fully support. That's what we skipped. You got invited to Jack's wedding. Uh, I skipped oh, it. Oh, <laughs> what? Alrighty. Damn. He wants as many robots there as possible, and he really likes you, so he wants you to come. Okay, um, now you go upstairs. You have some spirits redeemed. Einer's here. You say hi. You hang out and talk about feelings for a bit, and then I'm pretty sure this is where... Ah, uh, flirting. Um, and they talk about, um, sins. And then you get the other sin. I'm skipping it, though. Yeehaw. Okay, um. I've been in the metal scrapyard for 13 years now. I should be 18, though. So five years before that were spent with my owner. You wordly frown, watching quietly as your new friend continue <laughs> friend as continues to <laughs> explain upon seeing the concern reflected in your warm pink eyes. It wasn't too bad at first, but he became very violent once my model became old news. You see, he'd bought me to be a fighting droid to be bet on in tournaments, which wasn't his fault. I turned out to be such a coward, but I always hated it. Blah blah blah. Um, his dad was low key like abusive and mean. Um. Because his dad ran a, th a thing with fighting bots and, fi like, a fight club, but for robots. So when his one of his own robots is too much of a coward to throw a punch, it's kind of a disappointment. So, um, yeah. He was also going to be a character later. There was a whole story about it. But then I didn't make the th third gate. <coughs> I didn't make the second part of the story. I made the holiday special and I made the prequel, but then I didn't continue the story. So a lot of the stuff wound up not being continued. Um, Einer raised his gloved hands, looking at their sturdy metal with a small noise of disgust. Various dents and scrapes across his paint were revealed at a closer glance, and the robot clearly showed his disliking for them with a surprisingly bitter glare. It isn't right to make someone do else do what you want, to control their every move. It isn't fair, either. I wish I was like everyone else. I wish I could be free. But there isn't any room for bots like me, older models that can't keep up with the newest advances in technology and we're slowly being demolished one by one. If I were to leave for too long, it would be a pointless act. If I left the junkyard, it does nothing but create a loop, a perfectly rounded circle where the beginning slowly rises up to a neatly formed curve. It would I would have fun, and I could do as I pleased among the city streets, explore the floating land, meet others like me, and maybe even get a job. I'd be living a better, higher life than the one I currently led. My happiness would be raised just like the cur curve of the neatly drawn circle, slowly rounding out to closer to the top. But the drop back down would be just as fast as the upbringing. The humans would find out I wasn't up to their standards, not as good as their newer tech, and that would end everything. One day I'd be there, the next I'm not. Where would I end up? Back to the cir circle's start? Now joining the other broken machines and crushed, uh, withering scrap metal I can't read? Um, completely losing- or completing the loop I formed the day I first left. That's very dark metaphor to say the least. I don't think leaving the scrapyard would get you killed. Me and my siblings are all robots. We can go anywhere we want without causing trouble. The key difference is that you're all new robots. My model was out of commission before I woke up like this. I remember it so vividly. Dying. Only to be woken up, forced into a strange metal body where I'll live forever. I'll be here far longer than my owner and any other human I may meet. Lives come and go, but tools will always remain. A screwdriver oh, wow. can be- I'm it's not- simple dread is coming in. Existential dread, yeah, Einar is very anxious. Um, if you can't tell from all the stuttering and stuff, yeah. Yeah. A screwdriver can be passed down through generations of a family. It doesn't die, and it isn't seen as a higher being. It just is there to fulfill a task. It simply exists, nothing more. Made from the very same metal that now covers my body today. Now that's just silly. A screwdriver is a tool, not a machine. They aren't seen in the same light. Us robots can talk to people, help others, and create new things to bring into the world. We're sentient, and we learn from our mistakes, so you don't have to worry about not being alive, Einer. Is your television alive? What? No, of course not. It can talk. It's made of complex coding like us, but it's not alive. But a television can't communicate with people, it just makes noise. Animals can't talk directly to people either, but they're alive. 
Well, this is getting a lot more existential than I remember. <laughs> but that's because they move. They interact with the world around them, and they can change the world they're a part of. And what about trees? They don't speak, they don't move, and they're alive. They occasionally change the world around them, sure, but hardly anything to cause something as sudden as a human would. Well, uh, do you know what the key difference is? What makes something so emotionless and empty alive when we aren't? Metal. We are made from nothing but metal and code being held together by wires and bolts. Everything we do, everything we learn, it was all built by humans. That's what makes them think they can treat us like tools. That's what makes them think they're worth more. Whoa. Why do you think... Okay, we're going to skip this. This is going on for a while. <laughs> I, did, I did not expect it to get this philosophical. I... Philosoph it's where do middle I live? school me Germany. You did what some good fuck? writing. <laughs> philosophical. There were some good <laughs> moments before. It was funny. And it, then we talked about murder a bit. Oh, um, good. <laughs> the ethics of AI. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. That's probably why Einer's one of my favorites. He's an overthinker like me, so... Oh, yeah. That's and very good. I like that, actually. That's very nice. Thank you. That's something I do want to carry into the reboot, that conversation. I really like that conversation. It might just be word for word, because I like it a lot. Um, Please do. Please do. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, um... Uh, so basically, also, by the way, Einer casually just mentioned that he remembers dying, and you're kind of like, wait a second, you're not supposed to know that. Like, kind of like, Vivian remembered dying because he was Allison, he was the main guy, and now Einer's claiming he remembers dying, and you're kind of like, excuse me? Um, <laughs> and Rain interrupts, and it's like, do you need help? Okay, wait, let me actually read this, this is probably important. Um, that would actually, hey, why can't you two just leave me alone? It's actually just me this time, I came on my own to see how you were doing. I'm fine, thank you. I don't need to be followed everywhere I go. I hate to be rude, but it's kind of annoying, Rain. Well, that hurts my feelings, Morphus. You too, by the way. Not just the pink robot behind the screen. What are you talking about, anyway? All this nonsense about games and the player. Pen's in a prison, and the original chess game ended back when the seven of us died. So until I finish helping Pen with this amulet, I'm sure you know about somehow. The second game hasn't started yet. So what does all your nonsense mean? Why can't you just leave me alone like Poncho Kitty does? They're the only one I- they're only around when I needed help or something to learn about, but you just keep showing up. So I have to ask, why? What makes you so determined to stay by my side to the point of just appearing at random? Don't you have any other friends? Uh, Rain? An error has occurred. Please stand by while we take a quick look at the, what files may have gone missing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you made him mad. Wait. You made him mad. Uh, the game's kind of broken. Oh, there we go. How strange. When building this world, I'd plan to fix it. It was made to keep your world from collapsing, to keep you all safe. There are a lot of pauses, by the way. I'm clicking through them. Avoid to take in all the corruption and hate humanity has created. Not to form more of it. What have I done? A lot. Probably. You have to make things right. Finish the game, save their world, it's all he has left. And hopefully you'll learn a thing or two for the history given along the way. It isn't Rain's fault things turned out this way, so don't blame him for being so clingy. He's just scared, he doesn't want to lose anybody else. Let's hope things all work out in the end. Lost game files restored, the program will now continue running. There we go. Morphus! What? Oh, thank gods you're okay. For a second there, you just seem to stop. Due to his nervous stutter returning, you take comfort in knowing that Einar doesn't seem to be as angry anymore. However, you should probably redeem his sin now. Rain's sudden entrance was very overwhelming, and you'd like to get some- Okay, blah blah blah. Did you say you remember dying? I said a lot of things, Morphus. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to make you freeze. No, don't worry about that now. You made a good point, and you had the right to be upset about that sort of stuff. But there is something we need to talk about now. Like what? From what I heard, it sounded like you were upset about it. Okay, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> skipping, 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 skipping. Play the game if you want to read this. Skipping, 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 skipping. This is a long conversation. Skipping, skipping. Okay. Um, His sin is envy. He's jealous. Um. Okay, oh. Penn shows up and he's like, okay, let's redeem this sin. Um, And you do it. Yes. Um, redeem him. <laughs> Einar is jealous because he's literally like his whole tirade he's jealous that robots aren't treated the same as everyone else especially oh. older models 
So that's his sin, envy. Yours was wrath because you killed the guy. <laughs> a little less deep, but... A little less nuanced. A little less nuanced. But still a sin. Still a sin. Sin nonetheless. Oh, yeah. backstory. Um, the, the mutant that you killed... Like, your, your past life was Charlie, that kid with the red hair. Uh, Einar's past life was Samson, the fish mutant. Because, like I said, when the world got flooded, a lot of people were mutated and deformed. And he was one of... Oh. And he was the result of some of that during the Third World War. So there were a lot of oh, mutants, like, shit. locked up in... There were a lot of mutants locked up in asylums and stuff. If you want to read more about the full story behind all these little backstory segments, especially Allison's, they're all on the Dilbert Quest website. You can read the full thing there. Um... It's in, like, little files, as if it's, like, a detective case. And that ties into the prequel, actually, because in the prequel, you play as File, who was a detective, researching all this stuff. So, it's pretty cool. Um, anyway, I didn't plan that, actually. I just thought it was a neat coincidence. Okay, so Einer was the past life of this, and who, and even then, as a mutant, he was jealous of all the normal humans who didn't have to be locked in asylums and whatnot. So, um... But when he came to the surface, you were possessed by the Elder God and killed him. So, good job. <laughs> and then you doomed everyone. Okay. Uh, um, blah, 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 blah. Skipping, skipping, skipping. The skipping song. Skipping a lot of dialogue. Hey, we got our second sin. It, we wasted our entire first day, but now we have two of them. Um, skipping, Yay! skipping, skipping more. Skipping song. You talk to Pen for a bit, then you go to bed. Okay, dream time! Remember how the intro was a dream sequence? We're about to have another one. Woo! <laughs> Good night, sleepy time. Yeah, we're gonna speed run this. Um, dream. Dream. Okay, finally after moments of deafening chaos, the static stops and a new scene begins to play out before you. This is not unlike the vision you had received last night, but the very show that became this strange... Okay, blah, 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 who cares? Um, a ship? The strange boy paces along the small room's walls, running a hand through his striped hair. It was a pattern of orange and scarlet, like a fluffy ball of fire upon the mutant's head. Well, probably not a mutant. He actually did look more like more... He actually did look more like some kind of god. And when you see him shift to turn towards a book on his desk, the sketches of Penn's amulet scrawled acro across the pages hint that the assumption this boy was another god might not be too far off. They want me to go to Earth millions of light years away in a ship? An escape pod? The younger, teens, uh, the younger teenager's reflection stops, watching its counterpart stress with each stride digging across the withered floorboards. Indeed, it wasn't Penn's brightest idea. He sighs, letting out a soft hum of frustration as his reflection watches with a glint of excitement in its single ruby eye. Not wanting to waste much time, it isn't long before the stranger in the mirror starts speaking up again. Prestonival, why not take the planet for yourself? Penn's locked away and powerless, while his elder brother would be too distracted to expect it. It's just Presto and you know that. My point stands, you're a god. Demigod. Either way, you never do anything with that power. Why not start? Because, unlike you, I wouldn't be able to do that. Penn's a fair ruler, and there's no point in ruining what he's worked so hard to create. My job here is to use this enchanted locket as a beacon to find Earth, where I have been assigned with the task of helping the Seven Spirits release Penn. That's where I stand, and that's where I'm content. That sounds like good news for you. You'll be getting help from another god, one who actually knows how to put your amulet to good use. Maybe your luck really has starting to turn around. However, Presto's reflection doesn't seem nearly as happy as you are to receive this news. His bitter gaze shifts, and he lets out a scoff under his breath. Wow, I bet that'll go well. Bloody heavens, what is it now? Oh, he's British. I forgot this character's British. Um, <laughs> Bloody heavens, what is it now? Don't you pester me enough as it is. Oh, nothing. I'm just waiting for the fun part to continue. I swear, you better mind your own business, or I'll... Presto stops himself when the door creaks open, a shadow rising from the dimly lit halls before gliding towards the distressed demigod. A pair of red eyes contrast the dark shadow and a falter with concern, looking over the upset teen. Hey, are you okay? I heard Penn is sending you on a new mission, and those always stress you out a lot. Oh, Zane, it's just you. Yes, I'm fine. Just a bit nervous, I suppose. Nobody other than Penn or his brother would have ever gone to Earth before. What if I don't make it? What if the other surviving gods were banished? After all, it, it could be dangerous. Press, don't worry. You're good with your magic, and incredibly smart. You'll be fine. 
But what if I have a panic attack? What if I get sick? What if my gem gets damaged? What if I miss you? The shadow seems like he would have frowned if, if his appearance allowed it, casting a concerned look towards his partner. Look, if it worries you that much, I wouldn't mind tagging along. I'll just hide in the ship as your shadow, and nobody would know I was there. Really, you'd do that for me? For you, Presto. Anything. Thank you, Zane. It means quite a lot to hear that. The two demigods continued to drone on, conversing of their plans to reach Earth and teach the Seven Spirits. It was probably important, sure, but it was so boring. So much pointless dialogue when you really just want to get back to the lemonade stand instead. Maybe a midnight trip wouldn't hurt? That caught me off guard, and I wrote this. Um, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> okay, okay, I admit that was me. You want to be angry, but for some reason, you hesitate to lash out. He means well, and he just wants to help you. There's no reason to yell, especially if Rain just wants to be your friend. What kind of person would you be if you shut him out of your life completely? I see some baggage in the script here. Um, <laughs> I see emotional baggage sitting there. Um, huh. No, that's wrong. You take a breath and patiently look over to the strange robot staying ahead of you. What are you even doing here? I'm in the middle of some weird dream vision thing. I'm pretty sure it's important to my quest. When did you start calling it a quest? I don't really know. It just sounds right. Dear gods, the self-awareness levels are off the charts. What? Never mind. You got Einar's redemption. Congrats! Only five left to go. And, based on this vision's input, once I collect all seven, we can summon the demigods to help us shield the Earth. And save the day. Perfect form, my fellow theorist. Look at you, thinking about stuff and putting puzzles together on your own. You barely even need Poncho and I's quizzes. I'm so proud. That's nice and uh. all, but, um, can I wake up now? Of course. Just make sure you check on Einar when you do wake up. Wouldn't want him to be hurt or anything. Have a lovely morning, Morphus. Okay, there we go. The obnoxious machine finally vanishes, leaving you alone in the strange, dreamless void. As you begin to wake up, the world around you spir spirals into darkness, and you're drowned in the strange, dreamless void. Uh, repetitive. As you begin to wake up, the world, world around you spirals, and you're drowned in, your empty, in an empty abyss as you wait for the morning's colorful light. Okay, um... Your room is practically glowing in the vibrant sun. Okay, you wake up. Um, uh, you wake up, you hang out with Einer, you get PTSD yeah. over the boss, you hang out. Oh. Well, because okay, he's just I'm laying just on the floor. And you're, <laughs> well, because when you wake up, Einer's just laying on the floor and he looks kind of lifeless and you're like, oh my god, is he dead? And he wakes up and he's like, yo, and it's like, oh, 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 because he was just sleeping. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, you can give him a cute compliment, you can tease him about it, or you can be flirty. We're gonna be flirty. Yeah, do that, your be flirty. Healing, your healing voice does suit your handsome figure, my friend. Very cute. Oh, um, thank you. <laughs> His blush darkens, and the gentle giant shifts with a shaken smile, clearly very happy with how nice the compliment was. Yes, it is- Oh, the wedding! We need to stop getting distracted, or we'll all be late. Um... Skipping, skipping, skipping again. Oh, yeah, wedding stuff, right? Going to the wedding. <laughs> yep, wedding. Sorry, my brain has just kind of stopped working. No, we're skipping a lot of stuff. Um, uh, The lemonade stand, Rain's yelling at you, and the options are to, are to stop and see what Rain wants or avoid the lemonade stand. We're going to avoid it. I don't want to deal with this right now. Come on, Einar. You begin to pick up the pace, leading Einar away from the stand towards you. Yet when Rain sees this, oh. he falters sadly and rushes over to try stopping you. Wait, but there's an important quiz you need to take at the stand. You can't just skip it. Uh, we're going to town. You don't understand. You can't skip my part of the game. That's not what the script says to do. And that's not what was planned, and that's not what he'd want. He'd want you to learn from these lessons. So please, just take the quiz. The stories are all very short. You know it'll be easy. We're going to town. I'm sorry, but I can't let you do that. I promised I'd teach you these stories, and that's a promise I refuse to break. So I ref I'm afraid you need... Don't get to make the choice this time. Okay, we're going back. Oh, you decided to stop by after all. Welcome. Actually, stop the scene. I'm not up for this today. I know I made a promise, but if the player is just... I can't do this right now. I don't really want to think about that. Raiden suddenly vanishes without a trace, leaving Einar in a horrified shock of the sudden disappearance. Poncho Kitty also uh -huh. seems to be distressed by this as well, but continues with their plans anyway. Oh, um... All right, well, anyway, I suppose it's my turn to hold the spotlight for now. So let's begin your second test. Um, read the historical document. What is the name of the mutant that escaped his holding cell? 
Samson? Is it Samson? That's the guy we were talking about. Yeah, Samson. Um, that was Einer's guy. Um, now find the story named Holm. What is the name of the four-armed mutant trying to stop the litho virus? The fucking what? The <laughs> what? The what? Holm? Oh, it was Wesley, I think. Yeah, Wesley. Um, it's either Wesley or Handy. Okay, so it's Handy, right? What? I'm wrong. I made this Is game. It How Wesley? dare you? No. Yeah. Oh, is it Fletcher? Oh, hey, it's that guy that you broke up with. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's that guy. <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah, was Fletcher Kirsten vanished again? when he was researching the litho virus, and then he got mutated. And that's why he kind oh. of vanished. Fletcher. Hey! I'm the best at this game. So smart. Blood Red, Meredith's only daughter. Um, Lydia. Because that's your grandma, because Meredith's your grandma, and... Wait, no. What? Who was... No, that's Damien's sister, so it's not Lydia, because Lydia is Damien's wife, so... Um, Blood Red. Meredith Clan. That's who it was. Oh, it's not Meredith. Well, it sucks to suck. Allison Clan? Wait, what was the question? I'm, I'm confused. What was the question? I'm confused too. Who is Meredith's only daughter? Um,. Meredith, uh, I think Allison. No, it's Jade. It's Jade. Uh, hey, <laughs> I forgot Jade existed as a character. She's Showman's. Showman is a character later. You see them in the prequel. Jade and Showman. Showman is really cool. I got his character design from someone who used to be my friend. Um, I really like his character design though. It's cool. I need to update that. Okay, I will accept the cookies they gave you. It describes it so you can make them on your own. You're back at the carnival. Morpheus, how did we get here? We Weren't we just far out from the city a few seconds ago? Honor let out a noise of puzzled panic and stays close to you in his fearful state. I find it best to not question things like that. Skipping, 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 skipping. You see Vivian and Dexter... Vivian is basically, like, sitting on Dexter's shoulders when, oh, I saw that blush that I skipped past. I, I skipped past it, but I saw that. I saw that, Dexter. That's cute. Anyway, um. Oh, it's the wedding thing. Yay, it's even more cute now. Ooh, woo. Um. Wedding. Wedding. Yay. Oh, my. Oh, okay. Jeez. Excuse you. Um, whatever. They get married. Oh, uh, that art is super cute. Wait. Oh yeah, it's really cute. Oh god. Um. Cecil, when, when you will. Okay. Do you want me to read part of the wedding speech and just skip the rest of it, or do you just not want to read any of it? I don't. I don't care. Honestly, you do what you want to do. I'll read part I'm of the wedding. Five and broke. We are so. We're, this is taking such a long time. I'm sorry. Uh, we'll read part. It's of okay. It. Don't worry. I'm enjoying this. Three hour mark. I have to storyboard later tonight. Ah. Oh, okay. gosh. Then we Cecil. should probably, like... I'm working on it. I want to get to the end. I want to get to a certain part of the game before I end it. I want to get to a oh, certain character. Okay. Cecil, I want you to know... Okay, wait. I'm really bad at reading. Um, He's giving his little wedding vows. And he's like, before we do this, I want to... There's something I want to say, blah, blah, blah. Cecil, when you know that you want to spend the rest of your life with someone, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as it possibly can. We worked hard to get here, and that definitely shows what love's truest definition should be. Love is overcoming obstacles and fighting together despite all odds. Love isn't some fairy tale ending. Love isn't perfect like that, and it, and it definitely isn't easy either. Love is hard work, but it's also taking a step back from your difficult journey to realize it's all been worth it, because you did it together. And as it's been said by many others before, love is a short word, but it's somehow still hard to describe, and it's impossible to live without. We went through everything that was designed to tear us apart only to come out stronger than before. Every night, I'm never able to sleep because reality with you is better than any dream I could ever have. So to end on that note, I'm honored that you're finally my bride. 
That is cute. Aww. Yeah, it's cute. It's because she built him as an android, and because he's an android, a lot of people re are really against, like, robots and humans interacting or dating. So, like, the fact that they're getting married is kind of risky, and we're about to see the consequences of that. <laughs> are they gonna get hate-crimed? Let's skip and find out. Okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> cute wedding art. It's really cute. Okay, it was cool. It was cool. It was cool. It was cool. You see all your- Oh, no! I forgot about that, and I accidentally skipped ahead right into it. Um, the angry robot soon steps out of the shadows with the cr of the crowd, greeting you with a scowl. What are you doing here? It's- it's him. It's the guy you killed. It's boss. He's not dead. Um, oh, he's right holy there. Shit. Plot twist. Plot twist. He's right there. Um, <laughs> are you really friends with the Jacksons, or did you just sneak in here for your security work? You feel your circuits run cold as Boss glares towards you, the bitter tone in his voice alone sending a shiver down your spine. It's been a long time since you've seen him, and you were sure you wouldn't see him again to begin with. How are you alive? <laughs> Cecil repaired me after Flynn took me to her. It's nice to know I still have a friend. Does she know about what you did? I did nothing. You're the one who broke the laws. You know it was my job. I did what I was told. Boss's expression doesn't shift, however, and he snarls in reply. I've heard too many bots use that as an excuse against me, Morphus. At this point, I hardly doubt I highly doubt it's genuine. Boss, please, I regret what I did. Every single day, I wish I could take it back. And now I can. No. No, you can't. After what you did, I could kill you here and now with nobody to know it was me. I could easily make sure you don't walk out of here a functioning machine. Yet... Something stops me every time. Maybe it's guilt, perhaps a conscious even. Doesn't matter, whatever piece of code it is, you clearly don't have it anyway. You begin to grow angry and have a hard time holding in your frustrations. How many times do I have to say it? I don't want, I didn't want to. Maybe if you weren't working with the rebellion, I wouldn't have had to attack you. And maybe if humanity didn't treat us like nothing but pieces of scrap metal, I skipped my mistake, we wouldn't have to need a rebellion in the first place. He wasn't wrong, most humans did treat machines very didn't treat very, machines very well back then, and they still don't now. It seems, okay, blah, 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 robot politics. Uh, they make up, and they apologize and stuff, and it takes a while. It takes a long while. Oh, there's Flynn. He's cool. Flynn is, like, boss's friend, and he shows up to get him out of here. Okay, cool, cool. We're skipping. Um... Okay, um, even hoping for an excuse to meet someone new, you pull out Penn's amulet, as if using it to scan the crowd around you, but it gives no sign of redemption in sight, lowering your hopes far more than they ever had been before. On your way out, the only familiar face you can see is Jack's, but he's busy talking to a couple of gentlemen near the main hall. One of them was the ceremony's priest-like figure, his dark hair highlighted with vibrant purple speckled through his bangs. His glasses are tinted red and blue, like those old-fashioned 3D glasses you're, you'd read about being in movie theaters. His partner had brown hair, nothing too special, but it was slicked back in a similar way Jack's hair had been styled. His eyes were silver and empty, unfocused, as if he wasn't directly looking at anyone around him. He's blind! Um, but whatever did catch your eye was the color of his jacket. A lab coat of some sort, but with a mint green collar identical to your mother's. You weren't sure if your mom was working with any other scientists lately, but it could probably represent something more important. Maybe they all ro worked with robots? Who knows? Cebo Cecil works with androids, and she has her own coat. Those are the Ivy Collars, um, the organization that your mom founded. The, the Garrett and Fairwin are the two characters that they're talking about. I'll briefly point them out when we skim through the next game. All right. Yay, fun. You go to the store. You're hanging out. Rain comes up, bothers you again. What could you possibly want now? The world is doomed, I can't find the other five anywhere, and Pen is going to have to watch his own creation wither away because of me. There's nothing to learn from this planet's history now. No lesson to teach, unless you're going to tell me how it all happened before. Uh, you even trying to talk to me is pointless, and it's just wasting even more time. It has. It has what? It has happened all before. It's the only reason you're standing here now, not erased from existence. Oh, I'm not supposed to be in this game. Why else would I appear so happy in a situation like this? I'm not happy, I'm miserable. 
but I need something to show my presence in the coating. This was the only art of myself I could find. Funny that it was actually from the banner to celebrate finishing this very game, but that's not the point here. A long time ago, someone I knew felt like they had the whole world on their shoulders. A great responsibility and power was forced upon them, and they didn't know how to save the world they loved when it was threatened to fall apart. There was a horrible lady that twisted his heart and stressed him beyond his breaking point. He felt like he was powerless to stop the world from going to ruin, but he never gave up on it. That man just kept working and working, spending years building a plan to stop the world from going, growing into a distant future of chaos and hate. That future is the world you live in now, Morphus, but he managed to make it a better place for you before he left. He saved your world from collapsing entirely. It may not be perfect, but nothing is. All the while, he'd been writing stories of horror and heartbreak, shrouding them with mystery to gather humanity's intrigue. One of the Once the world was safe, he le left me to watch over it for him. I don't know where he is now. Probably lost somewhere in an alternate timeline. Do you want to answer some questions if I have to go to the hallway for a second? Oh, yeah, sure. I, I haven't seen any questions yet. Um. Yeah, we're probably almost done anyway, so just see if there's something to wrap it up. There is a few new people. I want to say hello to you guys. Um, so I want to ask what's going on. We're playing Dolber Quest, Rainbots game that they made, which is cool and fun. And you should stay here. And I'm trying to be entertaining. I don't know what to say. Nobody's typing anything in the chat right now. Um, that was my messenger telling me we have to wrap it up. So we're going to skip through the rest of the game. We're going to skip over all the lore. Um, we're just going to look at um, some of the stuff. Okay, so Rain is right. sad. If you want to read the lore, do it on your own time. Um, okay, cool. Uh, are you three interested in the carnival or something? The trio turn to face you with mixed forms of surprise, and you find yourself at a loss for words as well. Oh, hey, these are the robots I was talking about. Um, the, what's it called? The, the rogues. The one that was on the news report. Um, the first yes. robot is much stronger than you, and he has empty black eyes. They make him appear broken, and you recognize the uniform he's wearing as a uniform from the old train station that had shut down. The second is a much shorter bot, and her eyes seem to be glitching as well. Her outfit is oddly familiar, and it reminded you of the prototypes your mother had designed before making Bella instead. You never knew why the change occurred, but you love your big sister and clearly have no complaints. But the member of the group that really caught your eye was the third. He looked strangely familiar, but you couldn't place why. That's Adam, the guy from the game show that... There was a game show your family used to really like watching, and Adam was the host of it. It was like a robotic host for the game show, and he hosted oh. it with the kid Xavier, um, the one I keep talking about. But then after some incidents with like rioting against the robot stuff, um, he ran away, and people thought he went rogue. Now he's standing right here, though, so. <laughs> Xavier's not with him right now, but he's vibing. Um, That's good. But the member of the group that really caught your eye was the third. He looked strangely familiar, but you couldn't catch why. However, before you could ask who they were, the short girl aimed a, aimed a gun towards your face. Oh, um, grinning cheerfully as if it wasn't an extremely dangerous weapon. Oh, okay. Stand back, fellow machine. My name is Cindy. My companions here, Adam and Timothy, are currently accompanying me on an important mission. So choose your words carefully, peasant. We wouldn't want to have any trouble now, would we? Is that a gun? Oh, no, no, it's not a gun. It's, um, okay, yeah, it's a gun. Why would you need a gun to go to the marketplace? To shoot stuff. What stuff? You're doing me quite the concern, kid. She may appear young, but she's definitely no kid. Yeah, anarchy! Wait, I know you. Adam grows tense when he sees you recognize who he is, the past game show host quickly r trying to cover it up. What? No, you don't. Yes, I do. You're like show host, Adam. How are you here? I thought you were shut down. Well, I, I was supposed to be shut down. That's true. A strange man saved me before I could be caught, though, and he took me to an abandoned underground base of some sort. That's where I met these two. We're, we all just hide there because nobody would find us or harm us. Of course, Decay isn't the friendliest guy, and we'd rather keep to and he'd rather keep to himself. But he has his soft spots, and we get by. He's some sort of rogue scientist that works with magic away from the public, and even runs some experiments with us. But we don't mind. A rogue scientist studying magic? That's strange. You, that's strange. You could have sworn that Mom mentioned someone like that earlier. She didn't want you to end up like whoever it was, but your thoughts are interrupted before you can piece together a memory of who. But don't come any closer, Pinky. You might not know who we are, but that doesn't mean we can't stop you from telling. 
We may have an important mission, but you're not going to hurt our friend while we're here, please? No, it's okay. I'm on my own quest, too, so I won't interfere with yours. Um, who's this de decay guy you're talking about? He's a rebellious ma He's a rebellious magic fan with hormonal issues. No, he's just our boss. And we think he used to work in the Ivy Collar group alongside the main engineers of the city. But something must have happened because he never talks about them anymore. Something about his family? I don't know. Joseph seems to be the only family he has. I love Joseph. Um, what's with the sketchbook? Don't interrupt him, Cindy. That's impolite. Fine, but what's it for? You'd nearly forgotten about that roaming the aisles. You pick up the sketchbook along the way. Oh, right. I'm an artist. Okay, blah, blah, blah. This is where you draw that horse I was talking about. Skip, 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 skip. Skip. Okay. Um, do you want the horse to have long hair or short hair? Miko, we need to hurry up. I'm gonna get in trouble. We, do you want the I'm horse sorry. to have long hair or short hair? Very important uh, decision. Long, long, long. Okay. Neat. What about her colors? Bright colors or dark colors? Bright. Perfect. Bright. What's she like? word, yes. Yeah. What's she like? Strong and tough or cute and pretty? Cute. Cute and pretty. Awesome. Yes. You quickly finish coloring your sketch and present it to your three new friends. Oh, okay. Uh, wow, I love it. Um, you can tell it's not, like, super mu in my art style. You can tell I probably, like, copied the pose from someone else. Again, I don't remember who, though, so if I find out, I'll credit that somewhere. I don't know where I'll credit it, because I don't use Game Jolt. I don't know if I can edit the game description. I'll figure it out, though. Um, you are a very good artist, Morphus. Thank you. Okay, skip, 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 skip. A cute horse. Oh, where is shit? Um, we skipped past Damien. Show uh, not Damien. Decay showing up. Um, all right, we got everything that was needed. I'm ready to go. And Joseph, take notes on the carnival's location from the three troublemakers. Their mission will be put in motion shortly, and we will need to find another defect for our little club of sorts soon. A little human boy, with an odd variety of clustered crystals covering his frail body, nodded in agreement and took a short note on his clipboard. I agree. I'm starting to head back. I'm ready to head back to the clinic, too. It's a bit bright up here during the day, and I prefer the dim lighting of our base. The trio of robots then move towards the exit with the human boy, presumably Decay's assistant of some sort, and get back home. He's one of the mutants, by the way. Like, that's why he has crystals Decay everywhere. Decay looks very cool. Very cool, Kanye. Thanks. Yes, indeed. Decay is, like, one of my friend Yo-Yo's total favorite characters. His <laughs> eyes are a vibrant hue of emerald umu. Do I know you from somewhere? I, uh, no, I don't think so. He frowns and looks over you again, before stopping when he finally met your gaze. As if he recognized you as well, but couldn't either understand why. How strange. How horribly, undeniably strange. Decay turns to leave before stopping himself, casting a final look back towards you. Tell your mother that she's a very brilliant professor. I would have never expected her to build such a complex machine like yourself, and I do appreciate seeing you in a more lively manner. Give it time, maybe we'll meet again. Uh, and then he leaves. <laughs> well, that was creepy. You can't help but shudder slightly, nervously holding the notebook close as you grab, go to exit as well, only stopping when someone grabs your shoulder. Morpheus, I really need your help. <laughs> you frown and shift worriedly to face your friend. <laughs> Jack, why are you here? Shouldn't you be with C? Oh, wow. Jack, what did you do? The android's remaining eye glitches as he stares down at you, misery reflected across the half of his face that hadn't been violently torn off. Blood no. splatters covered his body and wire wiring hung loose from the brakes across his head. Hands coated in disgusting crimson, Jack quietly, quickly lets go of you and moved back. I don't know. Everything was blurry and now everything hurts. I can feel agonizing sensations in parts of my body I've never even felt before. All I can remember is a group of humans protesting at the ceremony. They were the humans I worked with. One of them finally learned I was an android and I don't know anything that happened next but my face burning and people screaming. It wasn't me, Morpheus. Something guided my hands. Something blue? Maybe a string, but I'm ashamed to admit that all of those humans died. Okay. Cecil tried to make me stop. Leave me alone. Cecil tried to make me take me home, tried to fix me, but even she couldn't stop what ever got in my head. Morpheus, please, I can't hurt her. Help me get free. Jack's voice continued to glitch and break, the sheer edge of the sharp vocals making your circuits burn with discomfort and fear. Okay, just calm down, Jack. I'll help you fix this, I promise. Something is controlling you, and those people should have known better than to attack you so violently in the first place. And at never at your wedding. Oh, Jack, I'm sorry. You pull your bloodied friend close, knowing how much this special day had meant to him, only for it to be ruined by people who couldn't accept change and attacked it. Freeze, criminal. 
What? You're under arrest for the murder of several citizens. Wait. Morpheus, why are you here? Get away from that thing. He's not a thing, Copper. He's my friend, and it wasn't his fault. He said he couldn't control himself, and the humans were the ones who attacked him first. Someone could have- he murdered several people. Someone could have hacked into him or used this to ruin his wedding. Isn't that obvious? Morpheus, the circumstances don't matter here. The rest of my cop units are outside on, on the way here to help me, and I plan on taking this murderer to prison. What, Copper, you can't? I have to, Morpheus. But it wasn't even his fault. That doesn't matter. I could get in serious trouble for willingly letting him go. Copper, are you really just going to let us robots get pushed around by humans like this? This is exactly why some bots become hostile and attack humans in the first place. We all want to live peacefully with them, but we're always made fun of and hurt. I've seen robots that could barely stand up for themselves t thanks to their owners, and some bots that can't take care of their loved ones, always on the run from people like that. Morpheus. Being a cop, doesn't that mean you have to protect both humanity and machines? No, I'm afraid not. What? You were on the force with us. You should know how it feels. I'm programmed to follow the three laws of robotics and protect the humans that obey their own set of rules in the city. Your friend here harmed a human being, which breaks the most important of the, our three laws. Does the fact that he was harmed first, Morpheus, and the fact that his reaction was based on defensive programming not matter to you at all? Morpheus, what if it was me? What if you, would you have taken me away too? What if, would you, Morpheus, do you really think I get to decide? The moment falls into silence and your boiling rage melted away into a frozen state of fear in seconds, unsteadily staring up at your eldest brother in concern. Humans still, dis humans still despise me having super, I can't read that, I'm dyslexic. Humans still despise me supervising them because I'm a machine, and now other bots hate me because of what I'm programmed to do. I get the same speech every day about how what I do is wrong, about how I'm a traitor to my own kind just for fulfilling my purpose, for wanting my family's home to be safe. Eventually I get used to it and brushed it off, but but hearing it from you, I just... Go home, Morpheus. Take him with you. Uh, we're gonna apologize, but he's gonna ignore us and he's sending us home anyway. Um, Jack, are you holding up okay? Yeah, but I'm surprised. Did you know who that was? Uh, yeah, that was my older brother. Wait, really? Yeah. Interesting. Ow! His eye suddenly flickers a dangerously familiar red, a jagged grin ca crossing his face as he twitched. You stop, growing concerned as the creepily wide smile remains, the hollow expression freezing up as his vibrant eye, Carmen eye, shifts to stare down at you. J my boy? Jack? No need for any of that, Morpheus. You know who I am. Even though you... Even before you took on that name, little one, I've been close to you for a very long time. You give Jack a confused look, completely stumped on what the malfunctioning robot was referring to, yet Jack didn't take well to not being recognized, and his bright eyes sparked dangerously. Ever since you were a mere human, I was there, just showing the violent side of life, influencing you with my powers, all to the point of your greatest feat, murdering an innocent, even if it was nothing more than mutant scum. I've always wanted to thank you, Morpheus. Without you growing up in the family my dear Litho had corrupted, I would have never had the chance to possess you. I would have never tricked Penn's magic I would have never tracked Penn's magic down to see you were the weakest of his seven, finally able to overthrow my poor brother once and for all. That being said, I do hold my highest respect for you. But I don't support what you're doing now. Just face it. Oh, holy Penn shit. Is a lot Excuse me, do you have something to say? <laughs> no, I just, my brain, my brain is working very slow and I'm like, oh, that's him. The Elder God? <laughs> yeah, that's him. Yeah, it's him. Um, why don't you just wait till tomorrow's end? I'll keep you around with me after the storm. You grit your teeth and take a step back. You knew who this was. It was the Elder God that overthrew Penn. Didn't matter if you figured it out one sentence before the game did. <laughs> Didn't matter how he got here, you need to help Jack get out of his hold. But how? There's no need trying to finish all this redemption nonsense. My old friend Litho has been working behind the scenes for our, on our plans for centuries. He's drained the life forces of many for generations, and he's even manipulated each of your pathetic friends. It just makes me sick watching you from above. Not a care in the world. Cheering up those I've spent years feeding off of built-up anger from. All the evil I've been harvesting is fading away, all because you have the naive hope that my brother will be able to save you from my wrath. And we're skipping the rest of this. I don't want, we don't have time. We're skipping it. Um, okay. It's really interesting conversation-wise, cool. but we're skipping it. 
Oh, wait, there's this thing about happiness. You liked that one existential thing, didn't you? Yes. Do you want to read part of this, then? Um, sure, why not? Okay, I'll read it fast, um, because I think this might be up your alley. Um, what do you think this is, Morpheus, a children's fairy tale? You may see yourself as the hero, but all you've been doing is holding back the world from the second chance to create the perfect empire, the perfect race, the perfect planet. None of it will ever come true if you keep ruining my attempts to succeed. I swear to you, I will purify your disgusting world, and you'll thank me for it one day. No, I won't. What you're doing is wrong. You can't expect everything to be perfect. That's not how the world works. How bold of you to say how this... How bold of you to say this to a god that knows very well how the world should work. What? He pauses for a brief moment, casting a frustrated glare down towards you. What makes you think you're, what you're doing is right? What's so enjoyable about teaching others to improve, knowing that they'll never be perfect? What motivates you, Morphus? What pathetic little thought gives you happiness? It would bring me amusement to know the source of your spark before I put out the flame. What makes me happy? What gives me the motive to help Penn and to succeed? I thought that was pretty simple. What makes me truly happy is life. You can find happiness anywhere in this life you lead and the many lives that surround you each passing day. No matter how bad the situation may be, no matter how dark, frightening, and overall hard the challenge is, I'm not going to give up and I'll find a way to be happy through it all. Recently, I've been told not to focus so much on the bad and I think that's helped me realize something. We skipped over that conversation. <laughs> happiness is a choice. One you can consciously make during each and every day. You can choose to find happiness in friendships, family, and above all else, life. Sometimes I rush into things, that's true, but I might not always act smart, and I may occasionally get things wrong, but I always find happiness in every little thing I do. <coughs> Venting. Um, because if you don't make that right, because if you don't make that choice, the decision to look for happiness, after everything passes by, what's the only thing that remains? It can't be happiness unless you try to find it, and it keeps close, and keep it close when times get hard. But after everything, happiness is the one thing that you can always have, and I'll never forget that now. Ha. Ha 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 ha. I'm not gonna do an evil laugh because I'm tired. You moron, you pathetic and significant moron. Happiness can only be achieved with power, with the knowledge that you can have complete control. That's the only way no one can harm you, and that's the only way things can be perfect. Happiness isn't just a choice, it's something that must be earned. It's sad to see that your only motive for stopping me is built on nothing but false hope and lies. My victory is assured. During our little chat, I've sent Litho down to your city, spreading as many sinister temptations as he can. Okay, we're skipping it now. Um. Okay. <laughs> and we read the cool part. Um, yes. I really enjoy the something is wrong. philosophical parts. They're fun. They're Thanks. good. Oh, I like them too. What did that villain I like do? That. He's one of my creations. He shouldn't be powerful enough to change my script. The coding has been altered. Characters are corrupted. I can't change it back. What's happening? Wait, no. I can fix it. Don't start the scene. Oh, and then the scene starts. Welcome back, Morphus. Uh, I said, how can we help you? What? Oh, yeah. Sorry, I haven't showed up on time. I just realized how little I care. Um, all right. You notice the cat shift in discomfort, as if their robotic friend sent out darker and bitter mixed messages, just twitching in slight annoyance when being looked at. Poncho Kitty stops when he notices how hurt Jack is and worriedly peeks over the stand's counter in shocked concern. What? He's supposed to be at the wedding. How is he here? There's another spelling error. Uh, he, he never changed. Uh, the script never changed. Rain, something's wrong with the game. So what? Look at Jack. Even his character sprite is covered in blood. We may tell many scary stories, but even we don't go that far. I like it better this way. Now I can do whatever I want. And player... I never noticed how absolutely fantastic you are. The way our humble little sc screen bounces light off your skin. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, what are you doing? Just putting my own spin on things. I, I feel something new. Something I never realized I needed. I feel powerful and I want you. I promised myself you'd be mine, player, and I'll do anything to fulfill a promise. Okay, moving on. Morpheus, we can help you escort Jack to your house. That's the best place to take care of him until Cecil can arrive to pick him up. Or you could forget about the murderous, treacherous husband for a moment and just stay with us. I can assure you that we'll both enjoy the company. No, stay in your place and stick to your job. Me? You stay to yours. Fine, I will. Fine. Why don't we just go somewhere else if you're going to be so irritating, yeah? 
We could have some fun here. No, absolutely not. Okay, how about this? Stop it, you're confusing the player. How are they supposed to keep track with the storyline if you just keep throwing random things at them? All right, all right, we can go back. See? It's all good. Thank you. Now, I'm sorry about all of that. He can get very excited, but normally I'm the more energetic one. I'd never seen Rain like this before. It's as if his personality's just changed. He's a good guy, so I don't know why he's suddenly... Rain? Yeah? Please leave the backgrounds alone. We need to continue the story. This is getting off track. Fine, but I'll be seeing you later, player. Skipping, skipping, skipping. Um... Oh, oh, and we're asking about the guy that you keep seeing in the void, the one who keeps talking about the game. Oh, him? Yeah, he's fine. This is his split-off universe for Corrupt Earth, so he can come and go as he pleases. Nice guy, really. Friendly and fun to play board games with. But aside from him, did you see anything else? Um, yeah. Okay. da 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 da, -da skipping. Okay, you're home. You brought Jack with you. Jack is confused because he just got possessed by a demon. Your sister's here like, wow, this is kind of stupid. Um, <laughs> Where the devil did you come from? I just kind of come and go as I please. You get used to it. Okay, yeah. Um, uh, I'm going to grab the toolbox. And yeah, okay. I'm skipping, skipping, skipping. Um, calmly explain. We're skipping, 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 skipping. I can make a song about this. You should. Skipping song, the skipping song. This stream has been three and a half hours long. <laughs> skipping song. <laughs> oh, there's That's a slightly a song, philosophical bro. thing. The Jack is arguing. Jack and Cecil arguing is pretty interesting. Oh, and that's scary. I forgot that was there. Um, but we're going to skip this part. Are you proud of me yet? Have I become another perfect little prop in the show you'll be staging for the entire city? A mere object for you to place and pilot however you please? You and Arthur shouldn't have brought me back to this wasteland. I'm nothing now. Just a worthless shell of a mortal. When you'd have no trouble scrapping when this all blows over. Okay, we're just gonna skip this. and It doesn't matter. Um, we're just gonna skip all of this. We're just gonna skip, we're gonna skip really far ahead. Yeah, the entire game just... We're gonna skip really far ahead. We'll just keep We're going. Clicking intensely. Oh, uh, tell the truth. Mm, skip, 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 skip. Uh -huh. And you redeem Jack's sin here, I think, which was pride. Yeah, it was pride. Oh. Going, 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 going. Oh yeah, there it is. Um, fi detective file. The Jack's past life. He was the detective that was gathering all those files. <laughs> Funny. Um, the gathering all the information you've been reading on the website. And he was also the one who'd been investigating Allison because Allison was kind of like possessed by a demon, which was Litho, by the way. That guy that the Elder God's sending down. That was like Allison's old enemy because he used to be possess Allison and go over the Cl the family a lot. The Klein family. You can read about it on the website. Um, I'm not gonna go over it now, but. There you go. Um, the detective, he has a ghost eye thing. That's in the prequel game. I played part of the prequel game in another live stream I did, so if you want to see more of that game, you have to go there. Um, okay, good. You got his thing redeemed. Cool. It was pride because Yay! I'm tired. Um, mm, I'm skipping. Oh, wait. Okay. This was a thing. Um, Morpheus, you don't understand. I need to do something. Countless lives will suffer if I don't. I need to protect them. I need to be their savior. I don't know how I see myself just stand by and let the humans treat us this way. I don't have the power to let, be peaceful with my message now, but one day they'll see. They'll have to see. Uh, there was a whole thing about that in my red bubble, like the difference between a need and a want, because Jack's character is constantly talking about stuff he needs to do for the greater good. Oh, and Bella is making fun of you in this scene for liking Einar now. Um... <laughs> Uh. Okay, um... You call into the empty air. Rain, can you hear me? The robot appears within seconds, po positioned a few feet away from where you now stand. He looks the same, but he's starting to look at you... F the way he's staring at you feels wrong. It's no longer cheerful, and his eyes have lost their friendly desire to help you. They're now filled with hate and building frustration. The green has shifted from more of a peaceful forest to one f flourishing with life. 
to a bitter color reflecting the shards of a broken emerald or a sickly venom. Oh, Morphus, you actually called me here. What a wonderful surprise. I always love spending time with you. However, when he greets you with a smile, it's as if any... It's as if it were any other day, and you can't help yourself but return the gesture. Um, hi. Yes, as my previous visits seem to have irritated you, I decided to keep an eye on our little game's protagonist. That would be a good idea for the future of the story. Really? I think it's pretty weird. You don't have to make a fuss over me. I'm fine on my own. He sparked, biting back a bit of a growl in disdain, yet he stayed silent and made no complaint. I just want to watch out for you, Morphus. People in this world can do horrible things, and the worst of it all is how they lie. They make you do terrible things, Morphus. I've seen a human break my creator's heart, and I just don't want you to suffer the same as he did. I don't want you to become bad. I won't, really. Just drop the topic, Rain. I can take care of myself. Don't worry. Rain's gaze grows dark, and his patience begins to break. He tries to reason with you, speaking of terrible people he'd had to see and what they'd done to him, what they'd done to his creator. Yet you were too focused on Penn's quest and wanted to assure Rain that nothing was wrong so they'd stay out of your way especially with how easy it was for him to tear apart reality it's around you. You don't know, have time for it now, and he knows it, so why is he stopping you? He looks upset, and he pauses after you reply, yet he stays silent and makes no complaint. I just... Morphus, this is important. You need to learn to be kind, and you need to learn to be a good role model for the players of this game. I saw that what that girl did to my creator, she ruined him, and she's done nothing. and he's done nothing but try to fix her horrible actions in the past. Um, that's worded poorly. Um, I told him it's a waste of time, but some people are just bad, and he didn't listen. Instead, he taught me how to fix, find the good in everyone. He showed me how fragile it is and asked me to protect it. I promised him that I'd help run this game, and now that I'm secretly found a way to plug myself into the coding, I can tell you this myself. Um, okay, whatever. Promise you'll try to be good. I'll try my best. He says you're lying. Who? It's not disappointing. I already knew what you'd say. It's not the enraging either. It's not enraging either, possibly because you already... Possibly because of after what I've seen in this theater, I know how bad you all are. No. What is this... What is this feeling that coats the way you... The... Coats the case you were put to be in? It's... It's funny. It's so undeniably painfully hilarious. What? You're all afraid of the dark, yet your shadows casting corruption all over the land is what forms the inky blacks, inky nights color. I can't read. Um, you say you have the freedom to speak and act as we please, but yet when we ha when we do, you only get angry. You claim that you're the most intelligent and peaceful races on the planet, only to waste away time on creating. Well, that got cropped out of the screen. Whoop. Um. Well, I'm not going to take it anymore. I've done nothing but help and guide you and offer my genuine kindness towards others, only for them to lash out and call me a liar in response. The human self-defense instinct sure is strange, isn't it? Turning good intent into a hideous confrontation, one where you'll be shut out, one where you'll shut out the good people that you wanted to help and welcome the bad people that wants, welcome the bad that wants you to break your mind in pathetic little shards. Even as a machine, you're still guilty of these things, Morphus. We all are. We all push away what's right in exchange for what we want each and every day. I have no idea what you're talking about, Rain. What's wrong? What's wrong? What isn't wrong? After seeing my creator crushed like that, watching his game turn bad, and all his hard work teach to teach me history and morals pushed aside, and that horrible, poisonous girl demanding his hope and humanity. I mean, demolishing. Whoop. <laughs> This world is impure and it's disgusting. I see that now. A little skeleton I met showed me the truth, Morphus. There isn't anything here worth saving. Everyone is just terrible. Even the player themselves is guilty. You know, the whole world doesn't revolve around you. Other people are still living their own lives as we speak. Just because the universe doesn't stop until you walk into the... Um, other people are still living their own lives as we speak. Because the universe doesn't stop until you walk into the room. And a lot of you need to learn that the hard way. So I make a charming deal. I'm going to change the game a little bit. I'll help, I helped Penn's little brother with a curse so we can keep you busy, and I showed Litho how to hold your little rebellion of spirits down so he can't attack our god, our true god. I'm getting tired. Um, <laughs> but, but Rain, you never wanted any of this before. What happened? We can talk about this, please. Just let me help you. Sorry, but we all know too well how trusting another will get you. I can't read. 
Once the world is flooded, we can start over with those strong enough to survive. We'll build an- Okay, basically he's talking, he's gonna give in to the Elder God's plan. Uh, it's supposed to be a cool oh. twist, but I'm too lazy to read it. Okay. Did you see him? Who? Oh, I've seen a lot of hymns. Rain, what's happened to my poor bot? I just wanted to tell a story, teach a lesson, undo the chaos that my magic brought to your world. Every day I work hard to make things safe for you all, but... Even I didn't see this coming. I would have never guessed Rain knew about what happened. I never guessed he'd be the one the Elder God corrupts. How did I let this happen? This is risky, but I'm going to need you to fight him off. When he tries to interrupt the game, when he tries to break the world I built, do whatever is required to stop him. I will not interfere unless you need me. You can still finish the story, Morphus. You and whoever is behind that screen. Ignore all of this and focus on the quest ahead. It is going to be a hard day. Do you have any questions? Who are you? I'm a friend, but you can call me Reaper if you'd like. There we go. Okay, epic. Um, we're gonna skip, 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 skip. There's all this really cool sibling interaction and character development, but... Whatever. Okay, we're gonna go find Hercules. Sky and Kava are here. You have to apologize for being a jerk and yelling at your brother yesterday. We're skipping all this really good character development for time. Oh yeah, Hercules just crash lands. Um, oh my gods, are you okay? What? What? Don't worry about it, I'm fine. Hercules is the only one who gets a character voice. <laughs> you freeze in shock at the revelation. The second line of the curse was aimed at Hercules' crash, yet he was completely fine? Wait, you aren't hurt at all? Not even the scratch. That was the best landing I've pulled off all week. You gawk at the Russian machine's wide grin. That's actually pretty amazing. You land on your feet every time, even at those speeds. Duh, I'm amazing. So let's get to your fr let's get you and your friends to the circus, huh? Wouldn't want you to be stressed over not finishing your to-do list. How did you know I needed to get to the carnival? Your sister was kind enough to shoot me a text, so I made it here as soon as I could. That made sense. Anyway, I doubt you want to be late. Step closer, please. Okay, but why? You're suddenly pulled into close to the other robot and are blasted into the air before you can properly respond to the situation. Yeah. Within mere seconds, you're already hundreds of feet above the city, soaring through the sky in Hercules' arms, causing your chest to flood with dread. Oh my gods, how did we get so high? My jetpack has boosters that can enhance my speed. Wasn't that obvious? Not to me, this is insane and terrifying. What are we even doing up here? Traveling in style, of course. Plus, this is much faster. Anyway, where are we off to first? Actually, I was hoping to get a chance to talk to you for a bit. Really? In that case, we can just stop at my dad's place on the way to the carnival. The station is quiet today. Okay, they're going to the police station. Um. Blah, 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 blah. There's lore, and I'm skipping it. Um. Uh. The Oh yeah, Hercules literally redeems his sin in like five seconds, by the way. Like he just does it himself because he's awesome. Uh it's the sin of gluttony. Great. He's the sin of gluttony. Um and the amulet gets it. Oh and hey, there's his uh -huh. backstory. We're gonna skip it. Also, if you haven't noticed, those eyes are in a lot of the backstory things. Yeah, we're not gonna explain that, it's fine. Um we're just gonna keep going. Okay, I guess. Okay. But I do love oh yeah, Rand shows up. He's good. We're gonna skip it, though. Rain shows up, and he's just basically threatening you because he's a villain now. Um, you will be left alone when this pitiful quest ends. There's no use for you when the world has already given a better defense. Even when you even your own father didn't want you. That's mean. <laughs> but not me. I want you, Morphus. I want you in the player, too. Oh, I forgot about that. I need you two to be here with me. I won't abandon or shut you out. I'm not evil. I love you both, and I can be here for the three of us from now on, Morphus. You, the player, and I can rebuild this game into our own story. No cruel little girls or bullies will pry it away. You'll be safe here with me. It's going to be so much fun. No one can hurt you now that I'm around. Nobody will oh, attack wow, you with words of venom. Is interesting. <laughs> it's creepy, yeah. My friend Hale drew that, I'm pretty sure. That or their uh, sibling. Uh, okay, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to skip this part. It's cool, and I like it, but I'm going to skip it. Uh, just for the time. 
Oh, actually, no. I guess we have to read it. Okay. Now hand it over. He's trying to get the amulet. He watches your hand moves on its own, slowly pulling Penn's locket out of your pink sweater. Your metal hand moves gently to guide it off your neck, yet the world around you glitches before the necklace can be removed. What the? I'm sorry, Morpheus. I... <coughs> Fuck. I'm sorry, Morpheus. I did everything I could. But his coating is corrupted. There was nothing I could do to prevent him. I still can't believe it. My dear Rain has turned into a weapon of my very own game. It's a horrible nightmare come true. But don't worry. I brought you to get things moving again. Uh, you're running out of time, and I've been doing everything- Yeah, we're running out of time. We're skipping this. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're- I just remembered that Morpheus doesn't wear pants. Oh, well, I forgot to answer this. This is file. What do you mean that's incorrect? How dare you? Wait. Uh, false files and answer the question that Chicken with Tall Tail was giving a nickname. Oh, Ghost Eye. That was the nickname. There we go. Um, Frozen Flames. Who was the odd man watching the town? But I don't remember. Oh, I have to go back and read. Are you still awake? Um, um yeah. It's like all it's like three AM right now. Oh I'm my so god, go to bed. I, I'm so sorry if I'm distant. Go to um, bed like, don't talk. It's go to bed. We're late. almost done. Go to bed. I will after the stream. Stop learning about me. I don't know what the code it wants. What is the color of the odd man watching the town? Oh, that's an error. Um, oh, the color. Um, the color? White? What? White. It has to be white. Because Allison was white. Yeah, okay. Last question. Read the story, Allison. Oh, that brings back some memories. What, were, what color are Alice's puppet strings? Blue. Okay, this is the one I actually recommend reading. I'm gonna stop to go over this. Um, on the Dober on the website, I'm gonna update it soon. But if you go to Lemonade Stand and you go down to Allison, this there is an entire novel here. You can read an entire story. I'm gonna reread it later. Actually, Allison is one of my favorite characters. Please reread his story. Um, okay, you did it. That's the answer. Okay, then we're gonna skip. Mika Yay. is dying, and we need to skip before Mika dies. Oh, you see Hercules' <laughs> parents. You see his brother, Jeremy, for a bit. We're gonna skip. Okay, I'm they not make dying. Life. I'm just trying to stay awake. Honestly. But I don't mind. This is really fun. Thank you. Okay. Basically, Vivian's putting on a show, um, and the cops are going to investigate the... There are some just dis- there are missing people's cases, so the cops are going to investigate the area the carnival's in because that's where a lot of stuff has been going missing. Um, and carnival is and the carnival is giving on a show tonight for Vivian now. Um, oh, and yeah, actually the cops just showed up. Uh, speaking of the cops, 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 we're cops, 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 we're cops. I don't know the guy who doesn't like musical reference. Um, don't even think about running, ringmaster. You're better off standing still th- than a bullet lodged in your neck. Vivian hisses in fear and anxiously shifts to look at the two police officers in the, in fear. That's repetitive. Dread covering his eyes with a dark shadow of regret? But for what? He hadn't done anything criminal lately, right? Jerome is much more nervous with the situation than his angered husband, but steps forward to speak with Vivian for a moment. Sir, on the account of the dead bodies on your property, you are under arrest and accused of murder. What? Well, we are investigating the missing people cases near your car. I heard, like, you dropped something. <laughs> What? Me? I, I heard you drop something because you were surprised. <laughs> a lot of things get dropped around here. I also smack my table a lot, but okay. I have ticks. Oh, so whoops, sorry, I forgot about the gore. <laughs> whoops, sorry, there's gore. Um, I forgot. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, how twisted could you be to force sharp electronic parts inside of- Okay, basically, let me just summarize this. We're not going to read the whole thing. Basically, after Sophie, we skipped over a lot of this story. It was brought up multiple times. I skipped it every time. Um, whenever, when Sophie, his, there's basically the human owner that Vivian was created to protect. She died of like an uh, an illness, a terminal illness, and she left the circus to him. That lady, 
after she died, Vivian became obsessed with the, the fragility of, like, how mortal humans were, and he began trying to find ways to make humans immortal. And by doing this, he kind of shoved electronic parts and robotics into humans. Basically, like, reverse Five Nights at Freddy's style. And it basically oh. just ended up killing them. Like, he could never get it right. So that's Holy what he was fuck, doing. okay. Yeah. Jesus. Uh, and then Dexter shows up to protect him. Because it's his boyfriend. And he doesn't want him to get hurt. Uh, uh, they leave. Um, if you hear his reasoning, you'd understand. He's very smart. And if Vivian's idea could work... And Vivian's idea could work if we gave it time to develop. I don't see a brilliant mind, sir. I see a madman that slaughtered innocent people. With that, Dexter sighs sadly at the response, vanishing with Vivian a second burst of magic before the stage was left empty, the flames fading away from th into thin air when they were gone. And now we're going to skip a lot. Um, if you want to do the... If you want to read this, go play the game yourself. It's on Game Jolt. I'm just skipping it. You find Vivian in his tent, you talk to him about it, y'all talk. It's a really long conversation. It's. I think he's talking about Sophie in this part, too. Uh, oh, yeah, um, Dexter's sin was sloth. We're kind of skipping over this. Oh, there's the backstory image. Um, Dexter, Tonica... And there's Allison in the distance. If you want to read about these, just go to the website. We're not going to do it now. Um, especially read Allison. Please read Allison. Rain is being scary again, and Dexter scares him off because Dexter's really mad that Vivian got essentially kidnapped by some random people. Uh, oh. So the gang's all here. We got everyone hanging out. Like, Boss shows up. Hercules is here. I'm sorry, this is all really cute, and it's all really cool dialogue, but I'm literally skipping all of it. You end up carrying Einer at some point, and it's cute. Okay, we're here. Um, hey, that's the guy who drew me a pony! Um, your fear is erased when Cindy pr pr prances up to you. A mischievous grin and gr present as she greets you. Actually, we have to skip this, too. Um, tell me where Vivian is now. Oh, the three you met at the marketplace... You heard them talking about it with Joseph a bit. Their mission was to do something to get a new ro a new rogue robot to join their little group. Um, and they had to go to the carnival. That robot was Vivian, and they low-key kidnapped him. Um, fun. Um, I'm skipping all of this. It's really interesting, I promise, but I'm skipping all of it. I'm sorry. Oh, there's Joseph. Hello again. What are you doing all the way down here? Hello to you as well. We're here for Vivian. He's the ringmaster of the carnival in town. Decay is very busy rewiring his system right now. I basically just want you to meet Decay and then we'll stop. Um, use force to get past. And try not to make him angry. Um, okay. Upon stepping inside the dimly lit room, the first thing you see is Decay's dark figure looming over Vivian. He's been bound to a metal table, trembling in fear as the shadow aimed a dark toxic... Uh, to use a green toxic magic on him, and considering that the ringmaster was in pretty bad shape now... This may not be the first time the painful spell was cast. Vivian, are you all right? Dexter urged you to move forward so he could get a better view inside, Decay lowering his glowing hands with a scowl at the sight. The cloaked figure quickly moved back to out of moved back to hide out of the blue magician's view, and you step aside as well when Dexter rushes to Vivian's side. Vivian made a noise of pain when Dexter tore the, off the electrical wires, pinning his arms and legs to the table, dizzily closing his eyes with a groan when Dexter lifted when lifted into Dexter's arms. Oh no, were you electrocuted? And what happened to you? Are you okay? The ringmaster is unable to answer your questions, simply hiding in Dexter's arms to relieve his pounding headache. Who would ever do this to us, uh, to a robot? I believe that would be me. Take one step closer and I'll snap your neck. Charming. It's a pleasure to meet you too. Hey, Morpheus. Almost done. Okay, um, hey, Morpheus, what are you doing here? Yeah, I have to speed run this so I can just finish it. I just... Mm, I'm almost done. Um, yeah, okay. Do we have any questions in the chat? No, I don't think so. Okay. I'm gonna get in big trouble, so we're gonna finish this now. Um, 
I came to save my friend. And I just wanted to get to this scene. This is what I wanted to get to. Here we go. Um, I came to save my friend, and you don't really... I don't think you should be treating other robots like that. If you burnt him too much, you could have killed him. He's a machine, nothing more. It wouldn't matter if he shut down. He could be rebuilt if his purpose was not yet fulfilled. What? Is that what you think of robots? But you are a robot. Aren't you? No, I saved myself from that fate many years ago. Even the government's lead scientists of the Ivy Collar wouldn't be able to do what I did. They may look good on television, but that doesn't make them very smart. Oh, hey, that's that... the dude who, who stayed alive, right? Yeah, the guy who stayed alive. Oh, oh, hey, yeah, that lead scientist is my mother, and she's been in isolate. This is why I wanted to get to this scene. Sorry it took so long. That lead scientist is my mother, and she's been an isolated wreck that hates humanity ever since the other scientists left. She even lost my dad, so you have no right to insult her like that. Hating humanity? Oh, please, robots are the real problem. Never fulfilling their purpose and then going against what the beings that built them... And then going against the beings that built them. Disturbing to think about. You wouldn't have even liked your father. He was a weakling and a coward. Probably the worst of all the scientists I was work that was working on your mother's side. No, he wasn't. You're lying. You didn't even know him. What gives you a better view than mine? That man deserved everything that came to him. His family was full of corruption that killed his brother, possessed his children, and drove him to do make the decision that he'd regret for the rest of his withering life. Don't waste your time on that man. He left your mother for a reason. What reason was that? To protect them. That's That man's problem-solving skills were never the best. Protect them from what? Himself and the demon following his legacy. I assure you that man was a failure to humankind. How would you know, huh? I just do. No, you don't. What gives you the right to talk about my father so terribly? You don't understand. Then go ahead and explain it to me. Why do you, why do you treat robots like this? Why are you so full of hate? Why do you hate my father? How do you know so much about him to begin with? Decay falls silent and shifts his bright green eyes to look away from you in a quiet discomfort. He's clearly getting worked up in the midst of your heated argument, but your thoughts are blinded with anger and you refuse to back down now. Answer me! Why are you so upset with that stupid man? Maybe it's because that stupid man was me. Time oh, stop. Shit. <laughs> I wanted Holy to get fuck. to this scene. I love this scene. I want fan art of this scene. I wanted to get here so badly. I'm sorry. Decay is a grumpy old man and I live for it. <laughs> Time stops, and for once it's not because of some strange magic controlling the world around you. Small movements are overwhelming your senses, and you feel like you might drown in the flood of shock at the revelation you've just come to. Your vision blurs and you can hear static build from your mind as Decay bitterly turns away from you, Dexter keeping Vivian held close as he watched you with wide eyes of surprised concern. On one side, you want to beat that cloaked idiot's head into the ground for not coming home after many years of worrying, worrying le it left with your, after many, after so many years of worrying it left your family with, can, yet on the other, you and your siblings always wanted to meet your dad and this was probably the luckiest you'd ever, you'd ever been throughout th years of searching. Okay, we're done. We went through enough. We're done. Um, yeah. Yay. This is the backstory stuff. You did but... very good. Thank you. You are a good reader. Thanks. There's still a lot left to go in the game. Like, we're gonna skip over Allison's thing. We're gonna skip over when Presto comes to Earth. Uh, we're done now. I'm just gonna hit the save button. Yeah, you can save in this game. Okay, now we're Ooh, done. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, exit. Okay, um, the other games were the Fall Festival, and then... Um, and then Ghost Eye was the prequel. Fall Festival, this is the sequel. Um, the main character of this is actually Einer. We see some stuff that happens to Rain in this one. Spoiler alert, he gets his butt kicked in the last game. Um, <laughs> the POV character in the second game is Einer, which is really cute. You see him here. And it takes place on Halloween, and Einer's scared of Halloween because of all the costumes and stuff. I'm just kind of scrolling through it a bit. And it's kind of a mystery game. You have to solve mysteries, uh, a mystery in it. Um, and they, all the characters have these cool costumes. Like, the three uh, robots are in, like, FBI agent costumes. Like, the three that work with Decay. Um, you don't Ooh, have a Halloween costume. I, I like that. That's good. <laughs> yeah. They... Uh, Joseph dresses as a mummy for his costume, and it's really cute. Um, uh, Decay doesn't wear a costume because he thinks it's stupid and commercialized. Um, 
I'm just skipping a bit to look at some of the stuff in the second game. I'm not really going to read any of it. Um, you get to talk to Decay a bit more, though. Einer and Decay talking is really cool to watch. Um, and then you get put in a vampire costume because it's cute, and I like it a lot. Um, and then skipping the fall festival is pretty cool. Then there's this bitch, Starlight. She's evil, if you can't tell. I'm telling you because no one's going to play the game anyway. She's evil, and she possesses Einar later because she works with Rain. Um, and Rain is evil now, too, so. Um, you talk to her. She sucks. She's scary. She's adorable, though. Yeah, but she's super evil. Oh, yeah, and you meet some, like, I wanted to put my friend's OCs in the game, so you meet some of them because this was a holiday thing, so I wanted to add little gifts. Um, blah, blah, blah. Einer freaks out and gets scared because he doesn't like Halloween. And then Vic uh, Vivian is dressed up as Dr. Frankenstein, and Dexter is dressed as Frankenstein's monster, and it's really cute. <laughs> um, I'm just going through to look at some of the art in the costumes, really. Oh, Starlight keeps showing up because she's a little bitch. Sorry for the annoying clicking noises. I'm trying to get to... Oh, there's Jack's costume. He did, like, a cool skeleton outfit. I want to get to Morphus in his cowboy outfit. Oh, hey, there he is. It's cute. Morphus is in a cute little cowboy outfit, and I like it. Okay, anyway, that's enough of this. Um, and then Ghost Eye, I went through in another live stream I did. Okay, I guess I can't open it, but... Um, I will look it up and point you in the right direction. Hey, that's us right now. Inception. Um, Yay! Okay, I have to just Google my own channel, I guess. That's us right now. Um, videos. If you go down, back here, um, how to have fun in quarantine stream. A lot of it is just me playing Roblox, but near the end of this stream right here, we play through one of the enti we play through um, an entire route of Ghost Eye. Like there are eight endings. We play through one of the entire routes to get one of the endings. Um, so if you want to see Ghost Eye, go there. For now, though, this little live stream here, it's been going on for four hours and it's done now. So if anyone has any very other questions, very short live stream. <laughs> very long live stream. Nobody's gonna watch it. It's so long. Um, Okay, so anybody have any questions before we close out, I guess? I need to get a new banner. They don't have a banner. I just put an image there. Okay, any questions? What is your favorite weapon? I really like... Um... <sighs> it's hard. I like a lot of weapons. I like melee weapons, even, but I'm too weak to use them. So I guess for the pure reason of aesthetic, I really like flamethrowers. Um, Mika, what's your favorite weapon? You're probably happy. Flamethrower slap, but, um, yeah. I think I'll go with, like, um, hold on, what's it called? <laughs> uh, the word... Sword! <laughs> Sword, great. Okay, that's a cool question to end on. We're gonna end this. this. It's been going on for too long, way too long, and I'm so sorry. Yes, yes. Okay, there's Everyone, our cute little thumbnail. Everyone, have a very good day, night, morning, whatever time it is for you. And you better go to sleep now. I will. Are you gonna go to sleep? Yes. I'm gonna come break into your DMs if you don't go to sleep after this. <laughs> okay, we're done. Oh, okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye. And I think we should be off.